Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Give us a hug. Give us a hug. Give us oh, a hug. Me or everyone else? No. Oh. Not you. Fuck you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. Uh, we are four guys normally, although there's only three of us today, who talk about games for a couple of hours every Wednesday night at 7.30. Yeah, GMT. Hello. Hello to those Hi. in chat. Thanks for those who have been hanging around and waiting for us to, to go live. We've got some cool uh, cool games to talk about this week. Um, Lou has actually played some games. Sam <laughs> has actually played some games. Ah, game. Ah, ah, game. Ah, game. And he's only been playing that for the last two days, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing quite a lot of games uh, myself. Well, I say quite a lot. I've been squeezing bits in here and there. Um... But first, I'm going to talk about Unepic for another hour. Uh, as uh, Lou pointed out last time, he didn't like the fact that I had, I think it was maybe a two or three minute monologue and decided to complain about it last week. No, it's fine. Go for it. Uh, no, I wanted to... Actually, I, I do... I, there was one thing I wanted to say about Unepic. I've, I've nearly completed it. I'm on the second to last boss now. Um, for those, again, who haven't watched uh, in the last few weeks, Unepic's a 2D kind of RPG platformer. It's been out for a few years. Very good, um, quite quite enjoying it. However, the boss that I'm on now, it's like this floating skull in the uh, and, and over a pit. So you can't melee it. You have to shoot it with arrows or magic, mm. and it's got fuck tons of health. I haven't got. I've I've not specced my character for magic at all. So I've just got bows basically, and I can't kill it. And it, it, whenever you look at it, it petrifies you, and it's an instant kill. So I'm just I'm just. I'm like that. Yeah. That sounds uh, like a puzzle boss to me. It, no, it isn't. I actually, because I got so frustrated with it, I looked it up, and what I'm doing is right. It's just hard, and that you're supposed to have um, more magic by this point. But I respect my car respect my character um, to be like all all my powers in axes and bows, and the bows just not very good, basically. Because you know that bow that I lost that I was talking about last week, oh, that bring corrosion that one. That was awesome. It was like taking at least double the damage plus a d um, DPS damage over time type thing. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I don't know if I can be bothered to finish it because I'm, I'm just, I just, I, I can't waste too much time killing one boss, you know? Are you going to rue the loss of that bow for the rest of your life? I am. Is that going to go on your, your tombstone? Terrible design decision. I mean, it's my own fault for the way I did it. You know, going to instantly teleporting to a merchant the second I lost it and selling it instantly. Like, without even a second thought, sell this toy hammer that the, the bloody jester <laughs> turned it into. I was only... I, the, the most annoying thing is, is that I only needed two more of these divine favour things, and that's like two more skele skeleton kills. And I would have been able to bloody get it back anyway but uh, anyway we are where so i'm not sure i'm going to finish an epic that's all i wanted to say about it this week all right okay. so it's interesting actually you were uh, bailing right near the end I've, i do do that quite a lot with games though if if they get too difficult towards the end it's not because i'm i'm scared of the challenge or anything like that it's because i have so little time to game that i don't want to Waste. I've, I've already got my fill out of that game. I think that's what it is. I've spent 23, 24 hours playing it now. That's oh, mm. that's for a tenner, you know, for eight quid. Mm. I'm I'm more than happy with that. It was a brilliant game. There's a few, as I said, design decisions that I, w I probably would have worked on a bit if I was a developer, but I can't really complain about it. I don't, I don't have to see the credits. It's like when I went up um, <laughs> Old Man Coniston uh, in the Lake District, I was the only person in the party of five because I was so out, out, of, um, out of shape at that point that didn't reach the top. And I could see it. I could see the top of, of Old Man at Coniston. And th uh, it, was, it was really bad weather when we got to the top. So it was like we were about 20, 20 foot, 20 meters away or something. And I was so exhausted. My legs were so fucked that I just could not take another step upwards. Because it was so steep when you got up to the top, of it. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I don't have to. I don't have to do that. Achieve the achievement to me is that I took part, you know. And I, and the same with me and my games. I'm not. I'm not particularly competitive though, in my eyes. <laughs> well, yeah. when it comes to Quake Two, I am. I think. <laughs> <clears throat> Reserve the hardcore competitiveness for just for Quake Two. Yeah. So Sam, what have you been playing this week? I mean, I've got a lot, quite, a, quite a lot of other games to play, but. Um, well, we could talk. Well, have you got it in your list as well? Like, just the only game I've been playing, apart from uh, Titan Souls, which I've already discussed enough, and I'm not going to need to say about that, uh, is The Witcher Three, which was released yesterday. Uh, the I went Witcher and bought 3. that. Yeah, and, uh, it's been getting 
lots of in crazily good reviews saying it's a masterpiece and all that so I've put in probably about I don't know four or five hours since I got it yesterday because I only played it a little bit last night a bit later on in a bit today for a couple of hours and uh yeah it's cool <laughs> you've you've spent the same amount of time I have I uh it was released a couple of days ago on PC I had it pre-loaded ready to go um but it was like 11 or 12 o'clock at night UK time that it got released so I played it yesterday, straight after work. I think it was half three. I, I played. No, no, sorry. I, the, the missus went out last night, so I, I took her there, and then I started playing it. So I had two hours playing it, and that was it. After that, I haven't played anymore. Uh, sorry, that day, and then I played a little bit just before we came on the show. And I am so far, I'm loving it. I've got. I, I went into a pub. Um, I've come out of the pub, and I've went along a path, basically. But it's a beautiful looking game. Oh, it, it really is. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out was something that I just noticed just as I was I was just sort of cantering down a path on my horse. And I got out to have a look at something, I think, because you can have, like, random encounters with stuff. You might hear a bloke going, oh, help me, witcher. But I haven't had any of them yet. I've only oh, been right. in the wilderness for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I ran into right, a well, wraith. I've, that's it. I'm with the, I've, I've done... I've done quite a bit. I've done the first, as in, proper mission that you get right at the start of the game, which ends you with, with you fighting a creature and you build up to fighting that I creature. I haven't done that yet, and I assume yeah, yeah. that's I'm what not gonna, going to... Oh, I've, I've, yeah. got, I've got to kill a griffin or something. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one I've just been given about. that quest. So. That's not really a spoiler since the griffin comes in in pretty much the first cutscene of the game. Mm. Like, it's there and you're introduced to it, so it's not like a spoiler to say that, but um, Ooh, you I can wander around... Like, to fight that, being, being a, a monster hunter and that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it came and had a go at me right at the start of the game. Uh, but I was just wandering through and I was just lo looking around and then I noticed that the wind picked up and all the grass and the and the smaller trees started to sway in the wind and it was like it was so nice and atmospheric and it was something that I've never seen done to that level before in an open, especially in an now, open world game as well. This br this brings us this brings me on to a point and and I'm pretty sure this is the case. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the case. PC the PC version has a number of optimize well a number of improvements over the console versions as they always do. Um, one of them is a is a, a fidelity improvement basically and it's the it's uh, nvidia hair works now i don't know if lou's heard about this or not i've seen this yeah it, it's amazing it's it's basically it's like photorealistic hair um, okay. and you know normally what they what they do with hair is you you have loads of planes you have just flat planes with with a texture on it and that kind of wobbles around you see it doesn't never looks quite real does it but nvidia hair works has got it's kind of a spline and it when it works like hair does and um now I've had to disable it on my PC, and I've got a pretty beasty PC because it still runs at 45 FPS under quite a lot of, you know, lots of full settings, hair works on, um, and like loads of stuff going on on the screen. 45 FPS is pretty standard. It goes to 60 in most places, like in smaller environments. But if I turn it off, it's 60 constant all the way mm. through, and it jumping up and down, especially when you're running through the uh, the open world area, it's it. Doesn't it? Pl I'd rather just take the hair off, you know. I'd rather because that's the only thing that. Rather that... shave everyone. Well, no, no, no. The hair's still on there. It's just the yeah. old, old technique of, of flat planes. But yeah. it's really, it's really interesting that it's there. It's been implemented, implemented quite well. And uh, Nvidia have actually got a really cool guide on their website as to how to optimize your PC to get it working. I haven't needed to do anything apart from disable the hair works because it's bet, um... beautiful. I bet Steel optimizes his PC to get the hair working, won't he? You know, you know, talking working. out of his ass. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i quickly talk about the things that I like about it on first impressions, and then probably a couple of things that have bugged me a little bit. Um, so, obviously, it looks great. The, the writing is very well done. I don't really know the story, but you you kind of jump into it, and you can immediately tell that the dialogue's well-written. There's a bit, of a, a bit of an info dump at the beginning with the, oh, and the times of blah, blah. There's always one of them at the beginning of RPGs, though. But it's it's nicely written. It's um, it flows well. It's not ham fisted or stilted. The voice acting is good. Pretty mm -hmm. much all, from everyone that I've seen. The main guy who does Geralt is doing a little bit of the I'm a hero in a video game voice. Yeah. He's, but he's, I, he's, you know, I actually mistook it, him for um, for Snake. You know, um, yeah, he sounds Hater. a lot like Snake, but putting on a bit less of a hmm. an accent. But still it's good. It's, it's 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 a good performance, but it, it's a, it's an affected voice. It, it's a bit that's become a little bit of a cliche to me that's so common in, in grizzled anti-heroes that like mm. they've all got to somehow talk like this and it's like it's just 
Well, I got me up one there. Hello! <laughs> oh, <God>. What? <laughs> oh, fucking do ya! <laughs> I don't know, I just think it probably wouldn't work. Um, oh, that's really good. Uh, the I like the I really like the the way that the, there's like investigation mechanics in an open world game. That's so where you have to sort of someone will give you a side question, you'll go somewhere and you have to use your Witcher senses, which is a little bit of your sort of Batman vision or your mm. your it's eagle vision from Assassin's Creed. Yeah, a little bit of look for clues, then you examine them, and then you've also got to figure out what the right tools are, the potions you might need to make, or the, in, the things you have to do to solve the problem. So I can see that being quite unique. And if it's a game that's as massive as it's supposed to be, that would keep it interesting for me quite I a didn't, long time. I didn't like the potions when I played I haven't played the second game, but I played the first game a, a fair amount. I mean, quite a few hours. I didn't really like the potion implementation. However, it seems nicer in this game. It seems like it flows a bit better. Mm. But the same goes for a lot of other things, like the combat. For me, the combat is is actually interesting. It's not just click, you know, in time with icons flash flashing up on your screen. It is uh, the combat. Because from what you told us about the first game, I was not quite ready for the combat to be just real time combat with ha- light and heavy attacks, evades, counters, mm. uh, spells, and all this kind. Of, it's actually quite. It looks like a kind of system that the more I level it up, the more in depth it's going to get. Which I love that kind of stuff, especially in an RPG when you want to get more powerful and stronger. You want that sense of uh, achievement when you become a more powerful being. So that's the stuff that I really like. So far, I'm really, really loving it. One thing that... I don't know if this is if it's not the same on PC because you just sit close to the screen, but a lot of new games, all the item text is fucking tiny. Like, I'm sat back, like, a good 10 feet from my TV, and just like, right, look at the item. And I've got a TV, and look at the screen, and the item text is, like, this big. It's 1080p, mate. That's what it is. It it's doesn't matter. Why, why, why can't the text be a bit bigger so it's easier to read? I don't because, understand. Loads of games do this. Because PC users, for now, for the last 10 years, are doing duet icons the size of watermelons and our bloody screens <laughs> because of people playing on consoles. Yeah, so fuck off. <laughs> why, can't, why, why can't they, make, why can't they have the this, happy mediums and I think make I, it I, a bit bigger? One, uh, which are one and two, I think, if I, if I remember correctly, they're born, they're, the, they're, the, they're on PC exclusively. So CD Projekt Red are a PC developer that just so happened to have released this on consoles. So shut up, because <laughs> it's about time we got a PC game that is good on PCs again. For because it's been so long in my eyes. I mean, look at the GTA. We've wait, we've waited for years for uh, two years for GTA Five to come out on PC. It is tremendous looking it looks and it's amazing and it, it runs like i mean to me it runs like a charm but you know it's it's been a while we've had to wait for it it's that's i mean it's li- the, the the gripes i'm putting in here are little the tiny like mm. that's one um I, i'll just have to either concentrate a bit more or just lean in a little bit for some of the really small text it's fine and then the other thing is just <laughs> just when i first started playing it it it, it felt a little bit the movement of your character feels a little bit uh What's the word? A little bit clunky, like it's a little bit binary. The sort of walk to run cycle is a bit like uh, 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 a bit jerky. But ah, I think well, it's just that I need to get used to it. I had that, but it was a frame rate problem. It looks, it feels fine when I got it when I turned the hair works off. I know you can't do that. Um, for mm. for uh, the nom nom guy in in chat, he's just said that uh, because Windows scaling is terrible. Uh, Sam plays it on the PlayStation Four. Played it on the PlayStation Four, yeah. I've played it on the uh, the PC, and um, I think Steve's got it on PC as well, which is uh, our uh, the fourth guy that we have on the show as well. So yeah, I'm, it, I had that exact problem when it was jumping from sixty frames a second to forty five frames a second. It felt really funny. It felt a little bit like it was, I don't know, it just didn't flow very well. But when I've got it on sixty, it's beautiful. Mm. But I think I know where you're coming from. The animations are a little bit funny as well. It feels it feels like he's kind of jumping back and forth a little bit it, as he's I running. Think it, I think it could be because the world is so so beautifully and well designed, and it it could be because the animations maybe aren't quite up to par that it stands out when I wouldn't have noticed it if it was a more say Skyrim esque game where you the, having a, having a slightly more clunky animation doesn't stand out in Skyrim because it's not as as abundantly beautiful as the witcher is when you're walking around in it i mean the, an- yeah, I don't know. the animations well in skyrim yeah the, the animations are awful in third person yes it's always been in Elder Scrolls games. Yeah. Always well, been. The, the it's like a tradition the animation in um witcher reminds me very much of the animation in um other mass rpg effect. well no it's it reminds actually me of mass effect the other one dragon age 
Um, oh. Yeah, it's well, it's the same same company. So maybe after maybe there's been some collaboration. It, there. it does that thing where you know what they're doing talking and they go, so we're going to go over here, are we? And then they like sift the weight and it's the same every conversation. No, that, they the do that is, like this game, which again, I don't mind because it's huge and it's all. <laughs> They've obviously got the voice actors in. They're not going to have an individual performance for seventy-five hours of dialogue. So I don't <laughs> mind that, but you do notice it. You get, you start to notice these things in RPGs. One one thing I liked about when I played uh, Dragon Age is that it didn't seem to do that. There was obviously repeats in there, but it felt like it it was dynamic. You know, it was dynamic enough for it to not be bored. You know, repetitive to me. I haven't really noticed that in The Witcher yet because I haven't played too much of it. Most of the cutscenes I've seen have been um, best book. You know, for yeah, yeah. Game type stuff. It isn't just in the dialogue bits when you talk to people, you've got your dialogue options. It's those bits, not the actual cutscenes. Though they seem to be more or less. I don't know if they're mocap, but they're fully animated. Mm. Whereas these are using more sort of standardized uh, animations just for the cutscenes, which is fine. I don't mind. It's just so it's funny sometimes. Here's a question for you both. I've not played any of the Witcher games. I think I might have seen one of the Witcher games being played. At this stage, would you say this would be worth? playing for someone who hasn't played the other games in the series would this be a good starter to the series sam hasn't played any of the games oh, right, I've, okay. I've only played a, like a few hours of the first one i mean no I, I, probably a bit more than that but the beginning of the witcher 3 i felt a little bit out of my depth for a little bit or i didn't fully understand what was going on in the first scene for example but then it became clear that well i won't tell you if you do you are going to play it but it became, becomes clear what's going on very very early and I'm kind of getting back into it. I don't think you need to play the other games. Right. You, you need to be aware that the other games exist, and probably that's about it, and kind of get the general concept that there is a history with this guy. He's 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 got a good age on him. He's not a young lad, you know, and he's got a lot of history in terms of with the other... Sorry, with the other characters in the game. I think, yes, if you like RPGs, I think go for it. Um, this, to mm. me, feels more solid than... Uh, any other RPG I've played for a while, it's, and it seems like I have to specify this is an action RPG. It seems quite it's quite action heavy. There's quite a lot of combat, and you're going to have to get good at the real time combat system. Definitely. Which, if you like that kind of thing, I'm it's fine, great. Right. I've died a number of times already. I mean, I've got it on the second to I've, I've got, got it on, on the, the hardest, but the second yeah, to last. Yeah, what's it called? Blood, blood and bones. Some, blood yeah, and something like that. Well. And there's one that's called just a story. One's like story and a bit of blood, and then one's like blood and bones, and then one's like death march. Yeah. The last one. I went for the one below death march. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I have yeah, died I quite a few times. I am a serious gamer, basically. It was. I read the the, the subtitle saying yeah, you're yeah. a serious gamer and you like a challenge. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it to be easy because games like the Elder Scrolls games, once you reach a certain level in them, there's just no challenge. You're just like oh. yeah. owning. You are the lord the of the game. universe, aren't you? Just yeah. punching dragons in the face for fun. <laughs> But then so, random, random, random guards will still be like, "Oh, so you think you're our dear?" It's like, "Well, yeah, I'm the head of all the guilds. <laughs> fucking killed Alduin. Like, what have you done, you dickhead? How dare you?" <laughs> Took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> For, for, those who, retired. for those who just entered chat, we're talking about The Witcher 3. Obviously, it was released a few days ago. So, um, welcome, welcome to those. Um, I've, I've been. Uh, I, I, have you got any other gripes, Sam? To start off with? No, no, no. That's it's only a couple of little bits. Um, it's good. <laughs> I have two gripes. Um, and one comment. One co the comment to start off with is that there's a lot of swearing in it, and I kind of like that. I like okay, that. It's, uh, it, there's a lot of um, the, the, it's, the people call you a dickhead all the time, and things like you know, they call you a freak and, and like the dickhead. Well, you know, I'm sure. Honest, like, there's a lot of there's a lot of I wouldn't even say banter. Well, there's, there's I'm banter sure. As well, but... I'm sure I encountered a group of bandits, and one of them noticed me and was like, "Fuck me!" It's yeah. like that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's it's quite. I like it. I quite like. As Sam said, the voice acting's brilliant. Um, in general, one <laughs> one of my gripes, and this is again a, a very tiny gripe, is that I can't skip when I reload the game. I can't skip the cuts. That there's a, there's a cut scene. Well, yeah. No, not a cut scene. A, like a little a little movie that plays to tell you where you're up to in the game, and it's just like, and Gerald did this. You know, like um just get you get you back into the story as as to where you are and you can't skip it and it's the same every because at the moment i'm i'm playing it in maybe hour chunks so it's the same every bloody time i load the game up and i'm like right yeah exactly yeah that's fair that's a fair uh, and there was there was one other thing i'm i love the combat i think the combat's amazing i'm getting into the menus i'm just starting to understand what's going on with with some of the menus but the um and i really like the menus as well they're really they're done really well but I'm not convinced I like the movement yet in general. I think it feels a little bit clunky in terms of when I'm on the horse, it's great. 
but when mm. I'm running around as uh, just on the ground, I mean, I have to. I'm, I'm. I think if you press control, it changes it from walking to uh, it toggles walking and running, and if you hold down shift, you sprint. Um, but the walking and running thing just feels a bit clunky for me. It feels like when you, you're constantly running all the time, and it, I just run into walls because there's a turning circle on your character. If you know this what is I mean. what I was sort of saying. I had the same right. thing. Obviously, it's done with the analog stick, so you push it forward likely to walk, and then faster to run, and then you hold uh, down X to sprint. So it's the same kind of thing as that, but uh, it, it, the running and it, yeah, you feel like you've not got a complete control of your character when you're running. This this is this is reminding me heavily of Dark Souls and Dark Souls Two in the way that that it almost feels like you're influencing the character rather than controlling the character. And that used to drive me nuts because I just walk off to the sides of like, it's, ravines all the time. It's not that bad. Uh, there is, I mean, you know what? You know when we were designing um, Charnhell and you were talking about um, adding in the physics-based like movement, and mm. you you liked that bit of slide. I hate mm. that. I like to take my finger off a key and it stops. But that isn't how animation works. You know, that isn't how a realistic game would work. You know, if you you're always going to have a little bit of a stop before you come. And that's all it is. It's just, the, it's the turning circle for me. It's like, I think I just need to get used to it, you know? When yeah. I'm on the horse, I expect there to be a turning circle, but when I'm a guy running around, I don't expect there to be that much, you know? Yeah, I kind of know what you mean. Might be a bit of a deal breaker for me, that then. It's, I, I really, I think we're making it sound bigger than it really is. It's really yeah, but not, it, it's, it's the same as, it's the same as, <sighs> A lot of RPGs have this thing where they have a lot of stuff going on, so the actual individual control thing isn't super refined. Like, it's not a super refined movement system. But it's fine, it's not bad, and it's not <coughs> upsetting, it's just a little bit... Given that the combat seems quite um, instinctive and, and polished, the actual running around bit is not quite as good, but it certainly isn't any way approaching bad. It's not like bad and I'm going, oh, this is really clunky movement it just isn't quite as smooth as some of the games have managed to do um a corpse has just said uh sharp, he, he reckons sharp turning animating is is hard to animate and I, I can say it is for definite i've been trying to do some myself for uh, basic guards in my game and it's it's difficult to well i'm trying to fit animations in you know free animations i've got off online into a character so it's it's gonna look wrong right? it's 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 a compounded issue if you animate something to look realistic then it has to act realistically mm -hmm. and realistically People can't suddenly stop from a sprint. They have to keep moving. They, they can't turn on a sixpence yeah. without there being some kind of acrobatics going on in there. And so they have to basically let the animation dictate how you move. And that's what you get in a lot of these games. I was playing the original Prince of Persia, um, a JavaScript version, online version. And th that had really complex animation, really beautiful, fluid animation. But as a result of that, it felt very clunky because you had to do out the animations. Hmm. Am I right? Like, you think had... some, some of the animations in that were actually rotoscoped of the they were, yes. footage. Yes, I think it was a guy who got his brother to run around in, a, in his hmm. bedroom and uh, rotoscoped it, yeah. That's cool. Um, what, oh, I want to say one more thing about how good the game looks. The water, oh my word. When you go to a body of water, the way they've done it, it looks like it has this really lovely blue um, sort of azure colour to it, but it has depth, so as you walk out, into, you wade out into the water, you can see to the bottom, but as it gets deeper, it gets murkier in a very realistic way, So when, and then you can dive into it and go down. And I really, really like the way they've done that. They've given the water a sense of, of physicality that really what a lot of games just get wrong where the water is just like a it's just like outside the water and inside the water but this water's got depth to it that actually matters in terms of how it's colored and stuff and i think that's again that's the kind of it's the details like that that really impress me in a game like this i'm with you yeah uh, one of the things just popped in my head is i died a number of times as i said and one of the times was i got knacked by a guard because i stole something and i didn't realize i'd stolen something i just thought i was looting a crate and and there's no real obvious way to tell you if it's if it's uh, you you're going to get done for stealing or not i don't really know how that that system works yet is it if there's visibility it, or if they can see you i think more or less right I bet it's the same as Skyrim, then, isn't it? But no, yeah. Sky yeah, I suppose, yeah. Stop right there, criminal scum! <laughs> <laughs> well, that was from Oblivion, wasn't it? Sorry, that's... Is nah. it the same in both? Probably Either something, something like that. I can't remember that level of detail. I heard it many times. Okay, so moving on, Lou. Yes, what, so... What have you got a game you want to talk about? I do, yeah. Um, I've been playing Killing Floor 2, the early access game. 
Sequel and that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, why do you have such a problem with this game? It's not that I have a problem with it. It's just that I'm I'm bored of of horde games. You know, I mean, I've I've had my fill of them. I think I've I've played enough. Well, I'll describe the game for people who haven't played it. So it's a zombie game, basically. So nothing nothing new there. Um, and essentially, you and a few friends have to survive several waves of, of increasingly difficult enemies more of them and between each wave you, you make the, enough money to buy yourself new weapons upgrades and things like that and so it's it's a game where it rewards teamwork in a way that i haven't seen on online gaming for a long time and it, when you join a, a server or if you just start start playing and people join your server everyone cooperates there's no griefing so if someone's a medic, they will go around healing the shower people and trying everything in their power to make sure that, that they do their job well. So it's a, it's really nice to see people fulfilling the roles of, of this sort of a game, an online game, where normally you just go on a server just to piss someone off. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've enjoyed it with you. I enjoyed Killing Floor 1 with you guys. I mean, it was, you know, it was a bit... A bit crap, really, the, as a that, game. That's it. that's it. The big criticism of the original Killer Floor, and I, I felt this as well when I first started playing it, because you know I'm, I'm obsessive about mechanics and movement and stuff like that. And Killing Floor ostensibly has terrible movement, terrible gunplay. It controls like you know children made it. Hmm. The new one doesn't. It's much more solid. And it also looks a lot nice, a lot nicer it's as well. Beautiful, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not like what we've just been talking about, The Witcher or anything like that. But it's. Um, it's a modern and real engine game, so it looks really good. And it just. It, they've. They've sold a lot of copies of the original game. They. They really did well with that. They really did well with the, the DLC as well. They got a lot of people, um, on board with the DLC. It wasn't a case of like you know a big company trying to milk us of every penny with DLC. They actually did things that the community responded to really well. Hmm. So they've earned the money to make the game properly. That's how it feels like. So Killing Floor 2 doesn't really feel like a sequel. It feels like the game done right. Now, there's not a lot of content in it at the moment. It is early access. There's only like three maps. There's only four classes. Oh, that's even less reason for me to buy it. But it's it, what's there is really good fun. Um, I, I imagine fun. it is. It's I, cooperative fun. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not criticising... Um, that I'm not going to say that it's not a good game because I haven't played it. You know, I can't. I can't tell you. I, I enjoyed the first one with you guys to a s extent, but I know how much you guys will play those kind of games. And it's like, oh, let's play some Killing Floor Two. It's amazing. It's fucking not though, is it? It you, you, you literally stand in a room and shoot a load of fucking zombies or whatever. It doesn't matter what is coming towards you. You're still shooting the same enemies. Right, cool teamwork. Yes, I agree. Brilliant. Brilliant. That you can, you've got a game that does that, and you go off and buy weapons in between, which is just basically Counter Strike with a slightly different. It's Counter Strike with zombies, yeah. Yeah, Counter Strike with a slightly different mechanic as a buying mechanic. I, I don't, I don't rounds, rounds and waves and things. I'm fucking done with. I want longevity in whatever game I play. I want to be able to. We yeah. got a lot of fun out of Killing Floor the original. We got way more than uh, fun out of it than we paid for it. Hmm. Uh, it was a budget game, I think it was like 11 quid or something, and we played hours and hours of that. I know what you mean, we do play games to destruction, but it's a game that we can play to destruction. I, I can't say that about a lot of games these days. I just don't get as much enjoyment, I think, out of it as, as the rest of you do. Or, or there's something about it that I, I just, I just I'm going, right, I'm killing the same zombie, I'm killing the same enemy over and over and over again with the same weapons in the same rooms. And fair enough, it's it's different every time. Because it's a game, you know, every game's different every time to an extent, but I just don't get that appeal. Not okay. anymore, you know. I've, I've had too many years of it, I think. Well, I'm really enjoying it, and I think as a, as a cooperative online shooter, I don't think there's a comparable experience at the moment of a game where you can go and play with the randoms and get actual cooperation out of them. But you, you, you said really that nice you never thing. want to play with randoms, yet you're playing people... I'm, I, I've, I'm surprised myself, but you can't actually lock the servers down, so you can't put a password on your server. If you start playing a game, then people will join the game. <laughs> right. So, what do you think is the reason that this game imagined to, to, to hit that, uh, I, I don't know, that idea of people actually cooperating rather than just being dickheads? I think it's because there's no real reward to trolling people. Basically, you'll die and you won't have any money to buy weapons. So you've kind of the, the altruism is there from the start. It's built into the game, and that you have to cooperate cooperate to be able to play the game. 
Like okay. the worst you can do is maybe weld it on someone when they're trying to get to the trader at the end of the, the round. Uh, and people used to do that. People used to stand in doorways or something so you couldn't actually buy any weapons for that round. But that's not really the case for this. It's people like do fulfilling their roles. <laughs> Everyone who's come on has been like a medic or something like that, being a specialist class, has been doing the job really well. Okay. So, so it incentivizes, it actually incentivizes cooperation. Yeah, it does, because properly. if you cooperate, you survive and you get money, you get to go to the <clears> next <throat> round. If you don't I cooperate, then you'll die really early and you'll just have to watch everyone playing it. See, for that kind of game, I think that's good that they've done that. I, I, I see, because I've played a, a bit of online gaming and, and had that issue of. You do a co-op mission with somebody. I did this a couple of times in Red Dead where you do a co-op mission. You do that together and then as soon as that co-op mission was over, you'd be like walking around like, oh, cool, cheers, mate. And the guy you'd just done it with would be like, right, the mission's over now. Bang, shoot you in the head and you're mm. like, yeah, dude. Like, I had someone on. did that to me on GTA Online the other day. We played a round of golf with somebody and then I spot, because again, I imagine my PC's <laughs> oh, slightly slightly faster than, than the average. So I spawned first. I ran off as I was jumping over a fence out of the golf course. Guy spawned behind me and shot me straight in the back, and I was like, "You, you just won that game as well of golf, mate. What, what's the point in that?" He was just making game. sure you knew he won. <laughs> yeah, love it though. I was like, <laughs> um, I th I, "Corpse has just asked a question. I assume this is directed at, at me. I, I, I think. Um, would you prefer a longer game or a game that would be more randomly would would be more randomly gen?" Would have more randomly generated content, I imagine. Um, I prefer long again. I, I, I randomly generated content. I'm I'm not that bothered about one way or the other. Some games, I mean, like uh, FTL has said, brilliant. I love the fact that it's randomly generated to an extent, but it's also an element of adds an element of luck to it. There's some other games that are brilliant with randomly generated content. That that, but that isn't why I play games. The definitely longer games. It's not necessarily. It's not the it's not the online component. It's just the fact that I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over. That's what annoys me, and it's grinding essentially. But it's but if with Killing Floor, it's grinding to no real avail apart from the enjoyment of the moment. You know, there's mm. no character building, there's no uh, progress, save progression or anything like that that I'm aware there is, of. There is more of that in the new one. In fact, that you've got perks which you can select from. So you have a skill tree basically as you get as you level up. You can decide which of two perks you want at each set of levels. But is that persistent throughout yeah. through gameplay? Yeah, that's that's your character, not the uh, server or anything. And when you come back, you will still have that level on those perks. Right. Yeah. So I, it, I, I just want more. I just want more interesting stuff. To I don't mind playing games where I do like. I'm, I, I always go back to the when I talk about my ideal online game. I go back to games like Tribes. That is a that is a match based game. Yes, you do the same thing each time, but there's a lot more to do in it than just run and shoot and buy weapons, like in Killing Floor. You know, there's you, you go and get loadouts. You, you know, there's there's lots and lots of different things to do. There's lots of different tactics, lots of different roles you can play, and it's not they're not predefined roles. You don't spawn as a medic. You don't spawn as an assault class. That that's all stuff that's been put in games mo in, in modern games to make it easy and accessible for. The, the non gamers or the people who don't play games as often, if you know what I mean. I'd rather the casuals, the dirty. Yeah, cats. I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather customize my character to the nth degree and go. This is this is what I want to be. You know, it's like it's going back to World of Warcraft type stuff. You know, you can you can spec your character for protection or for DPS or, or for healing or whatever. But it's still you can still have hybrid characters. I like that. I like that level. Not of really detail. World of Warcraft. Well, you could if you wanted you to. Can, you can more in the Elder Scrolls game. In the Elder Scrolls games, you really don't have classes for a lot of set. I think Skyrim's the first one where you do, isn't it? No, it doesn't. So in Skyrim, you can be a, a wizard with a massive sword and beat people around the head with it. So, yeah, yeah. I think they made a point of in the promotion for that game saying that you get better at the things that you do. You build, you build your strengths around your playstyle. And that's you you always have in Elder Scrolls games. You 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 always have been given some kind of broad archetypal classes that you can play as, but you don't have to stick with them. <clears throat> there was an issue with leveling though. You could only level up in Oblivion if you increased one of your set skills for your character type. So yeah. if you were if you didn't have acrobatics in your character type and you did loads of that, you couldn't then level up you by doing that. So yeah. that kind of put a bit of a hindrance on it. Still okay. They got rid of that in Skyrim, which was better. But... Yeah, they, they fix a lot of stuff. I they mean, did they... that in um, in EverQuest as well, though, didn't they? they? You know, if you swam loads, you, your swimming skill would go up. You know, yeah. And obviously there was issues with it, but 
still the same seems kind obvious. of concept. Yeah, yeah. Seems obvious, doesn't it, really, when you think about it, but anyway. Um, Corpus has just asked another question. Do you do you not find that long games have a sense of doing the same things over and over? It Old depends on, on the game. Well, yeah. It's, 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 I suppose it's the enjoyment you get out of doing the same thing. I think, as I said to me, it's the closed environment of, of these are the things you have to, you have to survive a wave of X. I mean, I, I, I say that, but I thoroughly use, I used to thoroughly enjoy Gears of War, the horde mode in that. Not the horde mode, the, um, no, it was actually the matches. It wasn't the hard mode. I hated the hard mode in that game. Um, it, I, I think it's just hard modes. Maybe, maybe that's what I don't like because I never really got into the Left for Dead thing with you guys either, did I? I played yeah. it a bit and I did enjoy it. I enjoyed the um, zombie versus zombie. Ver and it was in Left for Dead Two, the zombie versus humans. I really yeah, enjoyed that. Versus one was fantastic because there's more to it than just killing each other. You could be different classes. You could be different. You could do different things, and you know, it's not just when you talk about Call of Duties. You're running around on the same bloody maps, using the same weapons, shooting the same bloody people in the head, and getting trolled to hell. It's like, why? Why does this appeal to people? I don't get it. Because you become the, the, such a cerebral gamer now. I you? am. I, I'm the, the chasing the levels. You know. This leads me on to the next game, right? GTA Online, because me and Lou have been playing it a little bit. Uh, a little, Steve, little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I've actually played it a hell of a lot. I've played about twenty-seven hours of it now, something more than that. Um, I think I'm level coming up to level thirty or something. I'm getting into it, but I don't know how long it's going to last. I like the fact that there's progression. I like the fact that there's loads of things to do in it. I mean, there's literally loads of things to do in it. But I don't like the fact that it's not easy to play with your friends. Mm. I've we, we we wanted to go in and do all the heists together. So I got, we got we waited for weeks and we got a crew of four people together. We've got our own little crew. Um, we've got me, Lou, Stee, and our friend Greg. And Greg got bored in about twenty seconds and and started getting miffed off and complaining about it and spent about another hour complaining and then left well right. he did the first thing he did was when he walked into the game was shot someone in the face and the police chased him around the map for the next so half started, an hour and he, no and he was getting shot constantly as well because he was new that to was the as game well. yeah, that was that, as well but that happened to me too but i got over that i figured out how the you know how the immunity system works and everything else you can do it's again it's it's not the the, the game has got loads to do in it the thing that I don't like about it is not just the fact you can't play with your friends easily. It's hard to find your friends when they're on the same um, same game as you. They they've give you certain tools, but it's still not easy to do it. Um, and the fact that you, when you're in, you have to go into loads of menus in order to do things and like find your friends. And by the time you found them, you got shot in the face and you're reloading again. The loading screens take ages to load, and basically you're chasing that you're chasing levels. You're trying to level up or get money in order to buy the next gun in order to buy the next upgrade for your car you, you have to do you have to win 14 races before you can open the second upgrade for your engine or something in your car and it's like what should the goal be though i mean i don't know where you're going with this argument because it's like that's the whole point of the game you when you're playing the game you know you're not you're in it for the journey you're not in it for the goal and if the uh, journey's fun, then that's the that's a good game. Well, that's the thing. I've been playing it quite a lot, and I, I do. I am enjoying the the journey, but I'm saying I'm not sure how long this one will last because it feels a little bit like it's an MMO grind to me. It feels a little bit like I'm going to camp at the Orcs outside of Kanos, and I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm just sat there regenerating my regenerate regenerating my health, and then going in, procking a few, killing them. Going sit back down, regenerating my health, and then maybe sometimes global chatting and going. Mm. Anyone want a team? Basically, it's the same thing, but it's a bit more elaborate in GTA. I think my I, um, criticism of sorry, go, go on, Sam. I was just going to say I had a similar experience of playing the game, and the fact that so much of the content is locked off to you when you start out at a low level. Like, um, that, for example, you can be spawned on a map with players at any level. I mean, I don't, I don't know if on the PC you can change the settings on that. So you get spawned as a level 2 player on a map with a level 75 player who wants to be an arsehole to you. Now, you can choose to leave that game and, and join another one. Fine. Or make but yourself they'll, 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 
Oh, you get you could do that, but it's kind of, that kind of feels like you're playing GTA Online and then not going to involve yourself on the online component. So why bother play the one player game if you're going to do that? In a lot of ways, yeah. yeah. But so then, so, so you've got a pistol and you, that's the only thing you can buy from ammunition. And they've got a rocket launcher, a sniper rifle, and an assault rifle. And a lot of the time, I felt like I was grinding just to be able to survive. Like I had to grind up to the point where I could at least get a sniper rifle, an assault rifle, and a car that went faster than forty miles an hour. To the point where I could kind of just get along okay in the game for a bit. And that, to me, felt a little bit laborious. Like, I just like, I just want to get online and play in the open world. You Red are- Dead did that much better. You could jump into Red Dead, and it was a more, I felt like it was more balanced more quickly. Like, you had a crappy donkey and a pistol, but it didn't feel as unbalanced as being sniped from halfway across the city by a guy in a Lamborghini who then just rode off, and you're a like... A flying Lamborghini with armor yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there are, the thing is, I think it's, it's also a bit of a minefield. GTA Online, you, you can play it for, you could play it for twenty hours and still not really make much progress, unless you go and do the right things or you you figure out how again how all the menu systems work, how all the jobs work, how you need to progress each particular branch. You know, there's loads of different contracts you can do. If you start doing the contracts, or, or you, you can start making progress in that way, or if you want to start becoming a, a better wrist, a better driver, or whatever, you can go down that route. You know, it's it's all. I mean, but then then they've brought the heists into it, which I assume you haven't played, Sam. If you haven't, uh, the heists it. are really cool. However, they're not cool with four people at the moment because we're at the very beginning of the heists, and I I, I, I assume that it's it's built for going in and playing with randomers and not playing with your friends because we had four people and two of the peop two of the people couldn't play the heist because it was a two player heist so they they were off getting pissed off and more annoyed that we couldn't you know we couldn't play together while while me and Lou for example were doing the first heist and then me and Steve did the next heist and it has to be me each time because I was the heist leader and I was financing the heist and it I was the one with the apart. You have to you have to get to level twelve, have at least two hundred thousand dollars, and something else. Uh, have a high level. Oh, and then have enough money to finance the heist as well. Um, the thing about the heists is they they felt they, they they feel like you don't want that much dialogue and that much time spent concentrating on what the game is telling you to do in a cooperative setting. They've already shown in co-op games that people don't listen to the dialogue, so it makes you sit and actually watch the cutscenes, and you don't. You're mm. online, you've got voice comms, you're having a laugh with your mates, you're joking and talking yep. about bullshit, and this guy's trying to explain the mission which you can't skip over and just read a thing saying, which is all go great. to this place. This is, it's all wonderful, all, the, all the, the heist stuff. I mean, I, I was paying attention, but it was really difficult with people screaming at me in my ear. <laughs> but, but I, I, was, I was enjoying it, but in a single-player environment, don't do that in the multiplayer. You know? And this this comes down to this is this is kind of my big gripe with Grand Theft Auto Online. I haven't played it enough to really make a very informed decision about this, but it feels like they had a they've got a really really good single player experience with really a broad and deep set of gameplay mechanics in there, really beautiful world, and then it's like they've been expected to put a multiplayer aspect into it and they haven't been able to work out what it should do the, and the, so they've the, thrown everything in it and put a load of menus on top of it and put a load of maps and extra things and mobile phones and stuff and you go in there and you think what the hell I well, think, well, what am I supposed to do you know, it is it is overwhelming for, for new players absolutely you both said pretty much the same thing in different ways and, and I, had, I experienced that as well you have to put time into it in order to get here but it's the same with an MMO Apart from MMOs, usually have some kind of like starter tutorial and take you on a few early missions, which it does do GT Online. But the thing is, me, me and you wanted to, me, you, Sam, and uh, to, me, you, Steve, and Greg wanted to play together. So you, Steve, and Greg all skipped the tutorial. So you've got no idea what you're fucking doing on it to start off with, and you haven't leveled up a little bit in order to be, you know, have some weapons and be useful on heists and that kind of stuff. That's the problem. But if we, it's what, not. It's not the sense that I don't know what to do as in, like, I don't know the mechanics or anything. It's more the case of you put into this huge world, but there doesn't seem to be a focus or an aim like there would be in a normal multiplayer game. Mm. It's like everyone has expected GTA. Uh, did GTA 4 have online? It did, didn't it? But it was, like, horribly janky. And I can't remember. People it did, did, have a, did have online. It was, just, it was more just deathmatch and races. It was pretty simple. And... 
I don't want to say that that's what they should have done for this. I, I almost feel like they shouldn't have done online. They should have let... If it was a mod, if the mod community had come along and made it online, and it was exactly as it is now, it would be really good. I... But because Rockstar have made it like this, it's like it's got no purpose. And when you play this, when you play a single player game, it's so beautifully encapsulated, and the gameplay is, flows so well, even in that massively like sprawling world where you can go anywhere, it just doesn't translate to an online experience that well for me. I I, I disagree to an. I mean, I've I've got my gripes with it, but I think if you play it enough, you get it. It's like it's like saying um, Breaking Bad's not good for the first three episodes. You know, it's the same kind of thing. True. You have to invest yeah. into it in order to get the reward. I do have problems with some of the implementation. I think they could have they could have made a lot more shortcut keys for things on PC, for example. It might even be better if you used a pad all the time. I don't know. But, I mean, I use a pad for driving and for flying, but everything else I use um, keyboard for. Mm. There's a few people in chat who've been uh, who've been saying things about it. And um, Northern Monkey, um, who, who thank you very much for subscribing. You've Northern just, uh, Monkey. <laughs> he's. Um, I assume you're you're from our neck of the woods. He's um, he's saying that he's he's never had any problems with any of the heists. He said that four people's perfect number for them. But again, I imagine that you, Northern Monkey, I imagine that you spent time and your other friends have spent time, or maybe you've made a, a a crew with people that have been playing it for a while that you don't know in person. We play games together. We play games as like real life friends that kind of don't play the game separately. We wanted to jump into the game as level one characters and kind of get into it. I played it more than anybody else. And usually that's to to my detriment. You know, usually if I've played a game more than anyone else, I'm the one who's off in the in the front doing all the stuff and these guys are miles behind. And it's the same every time. So we always try and jump in at the same level together. But I knew with this, to get heists, someone had to be at a certain level, otherwise you couldn't play them. And it had to be me. Well, none of you guys were bloody playing it. What's that? <laughs> What the cape? hell was that? Was oh, a right. cape. <laughs> the cape. Yeah. Well, we all we all know anyway that I'm the control freak around here. So we do. <clears throat> I um I imagined that the four a four player heist to me would sound like it'd be quite a good number to do in a, a heist situation. Uh, well, it is, but the first the first heist we've only done the first one. It takes what an hour to do, maybe a bit longer. I think we've yeah. really? something like that. Yeah, and that was only all the way through. It, it's in different parts, so basically <coughs> you have setups for the heist. So you go off, you scope a bank out, for example, and then the next one you go and get, you go and steal an armored car. The next one you do something else. I can't remember what it was. And then the one after that, you um, you then rob the bank. And it's See, the, that part was really cool. You did that with me, didn't you, Lou? Yeah. That was really cool. I enjoyed that because it was I had to go into the vault and, and drill into the vault, and I, there was a little mini game with that. Lou had to do some hacking before that while I was driving. Yeah, and, I had um, to hack it and then, then jump, run in and shoot out all the uh, the. the the cameras and then keep the hostages yeah and, and that that is re that to me that was the exciting part that was cool yeah that if sounds we could have done awesome. that with four people thumbs up straight off i think we would have had all four people involved in gta online but i think we've lost one of them for definite i think greg probably won't come back now um and steve I'm, i think steve will be up for it again i'll be honest but i'm not sure about lou i have to be honest so can i ask then um so the setup section of that you just told me about four different things to do to the setup can not one of you go and do one of those? Can you not all four set? See, that seems to me to be a horrendous misstep. But one of the points about the one-player game is that you did, you had to do the heist, but you had to take control of all three protagonists to do each of their sections. But the idea was that they were doing that simultaneously a lot of the time. Like Franklin would go and get the garbage truck, and Trevor would do the thing, and Michael would go and do something else because you played all three of them, so you couldn't do that simultaneously. I would have thought one of the huge advantages of that is you go, right, these four jobs need doing. Lou, you do that. Chris, you do that. Greg, you do that. Steve, you do that. And we'll meet up here when you've that, all done it. That, that will be, great. be the case for some of the heists, I'm sure. I hope it is. If I'm it is sure like it that, is. then that would be great. Well, no, that, then... well that, we got a very small taste of that, though, didn't we, when we did the first heist? But I said it because it was two-player, because... I said, what, we've only, probably only got four people that are going to play it with us. I don't think, I maybe, maybe, maybe get uh, Biggs involved potentially if he wants to, maybe, maybe he might, might be up for it. But the whole point was all, us four were going to play together and it's probably ruined it because we couldn't do that. I know it's, it sounds a bit daft saying this, but probably ruined it because of the short attention spans, if you know what I mean. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, Louis, I'm hoping you're, you're up for it. I will more. play it again. I, I didn't pay 40 quid for it again. 
just to uh, play it I once online and then poo-poo it. I don't buy games twice, and I bought this, and I paid full price for this game yeah, as well, so I'm so getting I. my bloody money's worth. I bought it when it first came out the first time, and then I bought it when it first came out the second time, so I'm committed to Grand Theft Auto V, mainly because of the first-person mode, which I still really like. I really like it as well, and I was a bit... I was a bit it, the only time I don't like it is when you're coming off an ATM machine especially if there's people shooting you behind you and you're stuck to the ATM machine and you, you, you've <laughs> just put your pin in deposited all your money, you're coming off and it takes like two seconds, I don't know if you're invulnerable or anything when you're on the ATM um, Can I just bring something up? I don't. It, it, you didn't You didn't have to go to an ATM to deposit your money, you could do that on your phone for your online banking app No, nope, you have to You have to go to an ATM which is good because once Not you... on the PS3 version of GT Online, I always deposited my money from my phone Okay, I shall um, check that. You probably can do that. I think you can do like online banking, can't you? On your phone. Yeah. yeah. Each you've got your own online bank, and you just go there, and you've got funds, and you just go deposit into account, and you do that, and it's okay. much better. <laughs> yeah, Corpse has said the same thing. So, so Chris, you're wrong. Oh, so okay. no, I'm just saying I'm, that's I'm a tip. For you. That. Do that. You'll it'll make your gameplay experience much less stressful. Uh, well, it's not just that. It's <laughs> it's more of a. Every time that I've every time I finish a mission or I finish a bulk of missions and I've got like 50, 60 grand on me, I'm in the middle of a desert somewhere and there's no ATM yeah. around and I have to set an ATM waypoint and then drive all the way to it and I'm like, <sighs> I never get, I've not k killed yet while I've had money on me so I've been quite lucky there or not not a significant amount anyway. Anyway, so, so yes, should we move on from GTA or, or have you got anything else to say about it, anyone? Um, I will give it another try, and I, I maybe have been a little bit harsh, but I do feel, like I said, that it's maybe less. It has less of a purpose than the single player game, and not necessarily so because it's developed as a single player game. So we'll see. Hopefully, yeah. if the heists do do that and let you do independently, Northern Monkey reckons that you only ever work as for some or in pairs, which is a bit of a shame. And I've seen stuff too, like you can fast track your. Um, your way to the waypoints on the missions as well. If you want. The heists. Uh, and you, you, you lose a bit of a cut, but that kind of chimes in with the fact that you've got to stick as a team and do everything together. Which, I'd you want to do drive. that for some parts. I'd yeah. rather drive. It's not that far, you know. It's going to take you two or three minutes to get around the map as long as you're not a complete moron at driving. That's not, yeah, that's not, that's not the, the point. The point is that it's, it, it's, it's suggesting that, that's, that you always stick together when you're doing missions because of that mechanic. When you play with randomers as well, and I've done quite a lot of contracts with randomers, a lot of them are grinding them, so they're just playing them to get the 15 grand at the end, and a lot of them, like literally, there's one I did, and it's the first time I played the mission, you had to go to a barber shop, kill someone, go to a, an oil plant, kill someone else, and then go somewhere else. I went to the barber shop like a proper noob, as I thought, killed the guy, I was the only person there, everyone else was at the other, at the other locations that weren't even on the waypoints on the map by that point, so they'd played it a million times. They'd went there and they just killed the guy that they needed to kill instantly. Oh, and the then spawn went... captain. Yeah, basically, and then they, then they went straight to the, um, the airfield or whatever it was, the final part. Uh, whereas when you, me, you and Steve played it, we played, you know, even though we only did that one mission, which was the Titan mission to get that mm. uh, plane that you guys all died on. Because um, I had no weapons. Yeah, I'm saying that's the, that was a problem. So I, I, I did the rest of the mission on my own, but it was still, up until that point, we waited for each other. There was no time limit. You know, there's no, they, they're grinding it, so they're, they're trying to do it as quickly. So I'm not getting as much out of it by playing with randomers as I would from playing with you guys, you know? And I don't, even if we need to grind, right, today we need to get 100 grand each. Let's go and grind some race missions, or let's go and grind some deathmatch missions, or whatever. I didn't. I don't look that keen on the deathmatch. It's, it's all right, but I'd rather do other stuff. I think uh, just the survival mode is more fun than the deathmatch to me because it's co-op, but then it's a horde thing. So I don't know if you'll like it. Where you've got to do, you've got to like survive. As, there's certain places where you do a survival mode, and you'll fight some guys. Then some guys come with shotguns. Then a some guys in cars, yeah. then a helicopter shows up. Well, I don't. That's a bit like again. Trevor's um, psycho mission thing, isn't it? In one way, he's in the middle of the town, and there's people coming from all over. I've, I've yeah. absolutely no point. I'm sorry, I've absolutely no uh, no problem with that in the context of GTA because it's got so many other things going on. If yeah. if I'm, you know, I don't want to grind that, but yeah, I want to do all those missions probably. And they're good for getting weapons, those as well, because you pick up all the weapons from the oh, bad yeah, guys, and you can do. get loads of ammo and weapons off it, like mini guns and rocket launchers and stuff. We should do that when we play it next, Chris. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. All right, cool. Right, well, um, I've got a few other games to mention just before we move on to the news. Um, 
Uh, welcome to those who have joined the channel again, by the way. Which, uh, this is Resonance Arcade. We're live every Wednesday at half seven. Um, we do a two-hour show, so we're, we're, we're halfway through right now. Um, other game I've been playing quite a bit is a game I heard about ages ago, and a lot of people said it was really good, and I was like, nah, sounds a bit gimmicky to me. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies. Mm. Now, mm. I, I played it on my tablet because it was free. I was, I, I was a bit bored of... I mean, I've been playing... <laughs> Candy Crush and something else. Um, the other big one. Yeah. Angry Birds. Angry, Angry Birds. Birds. So yeah. I've been playing them through again recently because I never completed any of them anyway. I thought, don't think you can complete Candy Crush anyway. It's got infinite bloody missions on it or something. It's got a lot of levels, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm up to like 130 or something already. And um, I think I've done Angry Birds though all the way through the original with all of the extras and all of the add ons and all the golden eggs. And, and without using the fucking eagle, um, you cheap bastards. No, no, I've not used I've, I, I did the eagle missions. There's three you can do. I don't, I don't get it though, because I don't even know how you could use the eagle. Because I don't, I, I've never used Pay it. For it the... Don't you? You take a microtransaction, you buy the eagles if you get stuck on a level, and it basically ganks the level for you. But don't you get three eagles from doing the three free missions? But I, I haven't figured out how to use them anyway. Yeah, Not that, when I've needed them. So that's yeah, but that shows you that you can use them, and then you pay for them. It's a it's a money making thing. Yeah, well, exactly. I haven't paid a penny for any of these games. I, I play games because the games, not because I want to win. You know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so Plants vs Zombies played it. Uh, wasn't sure what it was at all I didn't even know but it's basically a tower defence game I was going to say it's tower defence isn't it I love it it's amazing Good. it's brilliant yeah it's so much um, it's, it's one of those that gets get, getting more and more difficult the more I play it the, the general premise is, is you've got five lanes and each of those lanes a zombie or a zombie or a number of zombies come down them and you set um, you've got different plants to defend your house uh, you've got a front garden and a back garden the front <laughs> garden is just all like grass but the back garden's got a pool in it and the pool adds an extra element so you have to put lily pads on the pool before you can uh, build plants on it it's just like it's just a tower defense game so you're basically you're building units to defend the lanes if the zombies get all the way to the lane you get one chance you get one life basically and uh, a lawnmower runs over them <laughs> uh, if, if you another zombie gets there then you lose it i'll be doing quite well i haven't filled any yet but it's starting to get really mental like to the point where i've got like I don't know ten or ten or fifteen zombies per lane sometimes just just flying towards me, but it's, I'm really enjoying it. Really, really like it, and I would recommend it if you want a casual game on, on your tablet or your phone or whatever. And uh, I've got it on Android. Is it yeah. what are the what? When you say plants, are there any like many so, in triffid plants, yes. or they're just plants that obstruct them? So, for example, yes. like this is this is a <laughs> tactic. Future in front of the zombie. Like, I so, can't get past it. You've got some, right, the, the premise of the, the again. Apart from the lanes, the other main mechanics are you need to collect sun in order to build plants. So you, you if you build sunflowers, those those emit sun. If it's during the day, the game is during the day that sun drops from the sky. And if it's during the night, um, you can only get them via sunflowers or via mushrooms that grow. It, it, there's a lot of mechanics in it. There's a lot quite, of different types of units, um, but you can build like pea shooter plants that shoot peas and then they, there's a, quite a few different variations of them there's a man eater plant there's also something called a walnut which is a wall nut that is a wall that the zom- nuts. yeah so you, you place that and the zombies try and eat it and basically they're eating through this wall and it, it just delays them getting to you so if you put like for example you put one of the man man-eat- eating plants just behind the walnut that man eating plant takes a minute and a half, two minutes to eat a zombie or something like that. So you, you eat the zombie while he's behind, while he's attacking the wall. But if another zombie comes along immediately and breaks the wall down, he will destroy the plant as well because the plants don't have much health. So there's a lot, lots and lots and lots of different variations on it. There's there's loads and loads of um, units, and there's by the looks of it, you can open thousands of them up. Um, but I'm enjoying it. That's why I mean, it's a lot of variation to it, and it's a lot of, it's tactical. It's it's very. Uh, after the first ten or fifteen levels, it starts getting tactical. Before that, it's just just place anything wherever you want, as long as there's somewhat on that that lane, nothing will get through. You know, yeah. I'd recommend it if you like casual games. Yeah, you, you know, you're into that kind of thing. I'm said I'm I'm doing it on the toilet and quite enjoying it. <laughs> Not building plants in the toilet, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, and obviously, I we we completed finally Metal Gear Solid Three. Yeah. And I've completed Metal Gear Solid Three, which is more important to be fair. Because yeah. being, being a Metal Gear Solid fan, I haven't um, I've, I haven't actually that's the one game I haven't completed. Um, not actually, not including Portable Ops and the other one. What's the other? Uh, 
bit of Vita game. Um, the uh, Peace Walker. Which Peace you Walker, yeah, that's it. I'm not sure if we're going to play that or not. I do want to play it myself, though. I think you should just have a go at it on your own. We'll just do Metal Gear Solid 4 and then see how we feel about it. After yeah, that, yeah. So, again, if any of you are interested in Metal Gear Solid and watching me fail miserably at life uh, in general, um, go on our YouTube channel because we've uh, we've now got all of the Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, th and 3 playthroughs up on there. I, There's hours of content. I would I would say they're more like comedy videos. <laughs> There's a lot of us <laughs> taking the mick out of Chris and Chris failing and There's taking the mick out of Metal Gear Solid as well. There's a lot of me <laughs> getting really angry with myself for being terrible at computer and realising how terrible at computer Not just games angry, are. but at one point actually depressed. I think there was a point <laughs> a few months ago where we were all feeling like a bit oh. down about it. it hey, well, it's all captured on video, so if you want to it's see there, a, a fully grown forever. man depressed playing computer games, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my one thing that I would say is a defence for Chris, and I did, I have brought it up in the episodes as well, because it was easy for him to, to slag him off, is we had a death counter incentive for the whole, all three of the games. Now, Metal Gear Solid is the kind of game where if you get spotted and you fuck up, you're best actually restarting that section rather than try to get through it. So that would have counted as a death. So you had to play through the muddle through way, which meant a lot of shooting, which you would normally just restart. If you got spotted in a certain room, you just restart that room. Hmm. Whereas you couldn't do that. So it, it forced a different kind of play style that isn't actually that well suited to Metal Gear. No, but I, I you know what? I quite, it's weird because I didn't really feel like I had to restart either. Like normally I would, I'm the same as you. I'd be like, right, start, select, chain, load. You know, I'd be like that and I'd be, I'd be whoring it. But it, it, I don't know, I didn't feel like I died too many times either. Even though there's 72 deaths through three games, I don't think that's that many when you think about it. Oh man, I remember the first time I played Metal Gear Solid, uh, the, the Metal Gear Rex fight and the fight with Liquid, oh, so, yeah. so many deaths. But I've never played the game before, like, I died a lot, a lot of times. I think, I think I'll probably die a bit more in 4, because it's a lot more action-orientated. Uh, well, I don't know, actually. We'll see, won't we? I suppose I'll find that out. So, moving on. We're the exploding list. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's joining in now. God, see, couldn't help see, it. it. It exploded right in my the face. Explodiness just went to every end of the country. So this uh, section is where we come up with a, a list randomly. Uh, you sometimes we have something pre-planned, not very often, or someone in the chat comes up with a list of something in games that is a uh, favorite protagonist i say the same thing every time same you example. do say, favorite protagonist <laughs> um worst weapons uh best cutscenes, most beautiful game favorite women in games anything like that um we favorite men in games favorite men in games favorite gay sex scenes in games um and I can, I can the games. only gay sex scene in a game that I can think of off the top of my head. I don't know why I'm focusing on this one. But is um, the is it Zor Zoran or Zoltan or whatever his name is in um, Dragon Age Origins, the the bisexual elf. He, he loves uh, he loves a bit of it. Loves a bit I, of it. I, I he it. he is forever more going to be known as the bisexual elf, isn't he? No one knows his name. There's no Cap bisexual elf. Zoran Zoltan Z Z Z Zoltan. Isn't that the um, machine Zoo. big? No, Z Z oh, it might be, yeah, but Zoltan's actually a, a merchant in Unepic as well. <clears throat> anyway, a bit of trivia for you there. So has anybody got one? Or I got don't any know. Anybody in chat got one? Well, last last week we did favourite online games. Um, I also yeah. said, I think maybe it was a week before we did uh, favourite animals in I've games. I've got one if anybody wants to, I'll go on, to have a go, but um, I was just going to say favourite uh, powers, or like you can include magic in that, but favourite powers or augmented abilities that you get in a game like favorite powers and abilities that you've had that aren't necessarily gadgets or weapons they're things that are, the character themselves possesses magic or powers or whatever you want to look at it as well oh, i God, can go no. with that one i was just yeah. gonna, i was going to list off all batman's gadgets but you said not gadgets so i'm talking yeah i'm talking about this is stuff that's intrinsic to the character's abilities not Items that they picked up. Oh, the right, uh, thing, okay. thing that, that that strikes me immediately is the um, is the the power. I didn't enjoy them though. I can't say that if I didn't enjoy them. Um, <laughs> you know, you bring it up. It, best or worst, then just right, notable, well, notable. They're powers not even worse. It's about. just it's just a <laughs> meh kind of power. It's all of the powers in Infamous. I'm I'm a little bit like oh. Oh, just just. So, <laughs> I've not played so. It's, <laughs> well, well, give me an example. Uh, well, basically, Infamous is a is a free open open world uh, 
super powered shooter essentially because you get electricity powers but you shoot them like a gun you tap, tap r1 and he goes dun, 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 and you get upgrades like grenade rockets you've got gliding abilities and stuff that you upgrade so you it's all electricity based and static based and all this kind of stuff but it's basically a shooter with electricity powers done in that way i really enjoyed the, those games i was quite a fan of them so i was actually going to say i quite like cole's electricity powers and the way that they're used um it's quite a simple thing, but it's good. It's just it takes a one like an elemental idea and just runs with it, as opposed to giving you loads of different ice, fire, lightning, or whatever like you have in Skyrim, which mm. I quite like as well. But they're all kind of the same. Augmentations in Deus Ex, I loved that system. It was one of the first games I played that allowed you to essentially augment your character with things like super bouncy legs. That's that's the official. Name for them, by the way. Um, you know, you could, legs. you know, you could jump higher in the original Deus Ex if you yeah, upgraded yeah, your jump yeah. ability. Um, yeah. But you, you basically you found back to char um, ca characters, back to canisters around the game, and upgraded your uh, character. Um, there was there was infra uh, like see through wall vision, infra vision, or whatever it was called. Yeah, you could there see was, where mm -hmm. characters were looking. I think you, you could see in the dark without having to turn your flashlight on, which was amazing. <gasps> Dishonored. Blink, Blink. It's on it. <laughs> I was going to say that. That is a good Blink. one. Blink, it is a very good one. It opens the game up so much. It defines the movement in that game. It's Did you play beautiful. the DLC where you play as Dowd as well? Yeah, no, it's no, but I think different. They, I think they improved Blink because you could use it. I think you could. I think when you press the Blink button, the game world paused when you were Dowd. So you could jump off something and then as you were falling, pause. We'll see where you want it to blink to and then blink there. Mm. Whereas in the other game, you had to do it all in real time, which was more all challenging. Of, all of Dowd's abilities were slightly different from from um, Corvo's abilities, weren't they? I mean, he, it, had a, he had a personality as well, which it, did, it was a Michael Madsen, wasn't it? He did his voice. Yeah, he did a great job with it as well. Mm. Uh, that's a cool blink. ability, though. I was going to say Blink as well. Yeah, that's my favourite of all the powers in that game. Blink is fantastic. So, uh, one thing... I suppose this is an ability of your character, but the Nidhogg throw sword... Mm, that's one of yeah. my favourite things I've played in a game recently because it just it adds an element of kind of surprise to the 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 combat. You know, it's just a little daft thing, but it's so it's quick, and beautifully it's... balanced, isn't it? As well, the fact that you're throwing that sword, you're making a massive spinning like weapon of death, but you've got no sword. All of a sudden, you have to hit, otherwise you're screwed. For feeling so such so, um, I wouldn't even say clunky. Um, the, the combat and the movement feels so loose and, and broken, but yet it is so balanced. The whole game is so balanced. I, do, I don't understand how it feels so bad, but it feels so awesome. Like it's very, time. very finely tuned. Fine line. They, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, they've, they've finely tuned it. They spent years ticking it to um, you know like computer events and stuff and getting people to play it and just tweaking it before they released it. Mm. Yeah. So that, that is a very beautifully balanced game. It's not, it's it has... not an accident. It's. It, I've seen gameplay of it. I've not played it myself, and I've thought about getting it. But I think you. Yeah, I think it's the kind of game that'd be more fun with mates. So you'd have to. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the AI yeah. is good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not. I mean, the amount of times that we were like, oh, yeah, like trying to <laughs> just trying desperately to get past each other and going all the way to the right, like three screens to the right, and then got pushing, pushing all the way back six screens, and then be like, oh. God. We, uh, yeah, some of the some noises, some of the some, noises we made. Some of the games we played lasted half an hour, and it's such a simple concept. There's nothing to do in that game. I'm just completely. So this is the same. It's the same thing over and over again. But I loved it. How's that? How's that? How's that work? I don't it know. Does. There's something about that game. It's amazing. Thank you to the developers. <laughs> I'm also going to say because it's integral to the game and it's it's a it's a really nicely implemented feature. But the spin dash in the Sonic games, yeah, I love that. Oh, Sonic Two onwards, yeah, yeah, in. that's brilliant. Yeah. It's, it's such a beautiful mechanic. I, I know basically Sonic is a sideways scroller where you watch the map go past for the vast majority of it. But the it, yeah. the spin dash and um, in Sonic CD you could do a, a up spin dash where you ran on the spot as well. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool. That I that's a pretty I never really even thought of that as a power, but yeah, that is a cool power and it wasn't in the first game. I mean you play Sonic uh, near the Sonic two and three and then you go back to one and you're like, Oh, I can't do the spin you dash. It feels <laughs> yeah, it feels really you feel really less powerful, it really makes a big difference. It is a um, yeah. this is this kind of ties into if I could pick a superpower in real life what I would have, but has anyone ever played a game um called Second Sight, which is a I believe a PlayStation two? It might have been on the original Xbox. 
it was um it was a, a game when you played as a character who got telekinetic psychokinetic abilities uh, in the game so there was simply picking things up and throwing them and you had to level that up so you could the, the last level of the game was being able to pick up humans and then kill them and do stuff like that with them and uh, you could you could project where you could fight you could put yourself in a place where you could because there was a lot of stealth in it as well put yourself in a corner and then project and run around as an invisible you know spirit projection to go and see what areas of the game and then find out where the guards are then come back to your own body and work out how to get past them mm. it had lots of cool stuff like you could possess i think you could possess uh, baddies as well for a limited amount of time to get through certain areas and things like that like that it, 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 it did the progression of the powers really really well so that you unlock them piece by piece and it had a very nice progression to it it was a quite of an underrated game and it was a shooter as well so you had shooting sections in it but the telekinesis sections were by far the most fun and I, it's one of those things if i had to have any real superpower it would be like Superpowered telekinesis, where you can make yourself fly and do all kinds of cool shit. That, that brought back memories of Oblivion telekinesis and um, mm. the, the possession in um, Dishonored. Uh, well, Dishonored. Yeah, in Dishonored, but um, more recently, where well, I've been playing Dungeon Keeper, and even yeah. I mean that is a apparent. I'm, I don't use it too much, but that is one of the one of the main like speed running tactics, isn't it, to possess it is, somebody yeah. and possess an imp and just smash through the walls as fast as you can. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um. Anybody, I don't know if anybody in chat's brought any up that they want to say or uh, just to us. talked about the arse mines from Magicka. <laughs> mines you cast by pressing the keys A, R, S and E that freeze <laughs> well, those <laughs> funny you should... and send them flying. Arse mines. I like, I like arse funny mines. Funny you should mention uh, um, uh, Magicka because I've just got it on the Humble Bundle. Um, I've got it because a friend, and I, can't, I think it was Marzi actually. I was speaking to Marzi the other day on... Um, uh, on Steam, and he he mentioned a game called. Oh god damn it! God damn it! I've not heard of that one. <sighs> Shut up. It's a game of blasphemy. Teleglitch. That was it. Teleglitch. Tele um, and it's a procedurally generated kind of horror, uh, top-down shooter type thing. And he said that it's it's kind of an underrated. It's it's well known, but it's a bit underrated in his eyes. And uh, it was on the Steam. It was on the, the humble bundle sale. So I got that, but I got Magicka and everything else with it. So. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to playing. I'm, I might have a go of them if there's something called an arse mine in it. That sounds uh, <laughs> quite amusing. What about the um, the abilities of the characters in in Rogue Legacy? Because they, I mean, oh yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, some of them can do certain things, and yeah. So there's so many though. There's, I can't think of any specific ones that I favoured. You know, I, I liked I liked the uh, gigantism, for example, that you, that you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't get thrown back, but. I never actually liked playing any of the dwarfism characters, although they were good for getting through small spaces and stuff, you know? But the thing is, whenever you had picked a dwarfism character, you'd generate a level that had no dwarfism spaces to get through, you were like, come on! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there was, I think the ninja had uh, increased speed and attack power and things like that, so they, they all had, like, there was lots of different things, weren't there? Yeah. And some so of them were really funny, like, some of them were, like, makes it in... Uh, someone would, it would be nostalgic, so you'd see if they didn't like sepia tones, yeah. <laughs> things like that. I really like that. It was funny. But apparently, the uh, the the uh, if your character's gay, the only thing that's different is the male and female characters on the boss area are swapped around. Okay, that you know the you know the, the two statues that you break before you go into a boss area, and it gives you health and <laughs> something else. Apparently, really? they're just swapped around or something. That's the only difference. How strange. Well. Okay, I did not know so that. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be discriminated against, should there? So, yeah, it was one of those things <laughs> that they put that that you, that you were gay in the game. I was like, it, make, it doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. Which I kind of guess is the point. But why even bring it up? Yeah, yeah. If it's not going to change, if it's not going to have any effects, I guess. Anyway, but yeah, I was also going to bring up a game that I liked, and I don't think I think Chris has played it. I quite like the um, the myriad of shape shifting powers and abilities that you had in prototype as well. Uh, yeah. You could run up walls, glide, make your make your hands into claws and swords and hammers and stuff like that, and, sh and uh, shape shift into other people and take over people's bodies and stuff. That was uh, I quite like the power set in that game. It made you feel made you feel like a powerful, nasty piece of shit. It was good. Yeah, I said I played it a little bit, but again, it just felt a bit flaky the whole game to me. And it was, it was, they had some cool concepts, but I, I don't know. I think at the time I was playing Infamous as well, the original, mm. and they were too similar. And I was like, oh, I kind of played this game. They did of. come out very close to each other. Yeah, they were competing, in fact, I think, weren't they? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I think Infamous won that war, though, by the looks of it. 
Yeah, kind of did. I think there was a problem with Prototype 2, that it came out and it was a good game. Um, they unfortunately messed up the story a lot, which some people said the story in the first one wasn't that great, but it was really crap in the second one. And it was made, it was too much pressure put on it, so they, it had, it was one of those games where they were like, to authorise this advertisement budget that we've given you, development budget, your game has to make this much money or it's a failure. And the game did well by any normal game standards, but it wasn't a massive blockbuster smash that they wanted it to be. Considering that it was an 18 rated game was asking a lot in the first place, and uh, that studio was uh, closed down subsequently, which is a shame because I quite enjoyed both of those games. But I remember there being a lot of hype anymore. for the games. I remember being like it had a big marketing campaign, didn't it? so someone was trying to push it quite heavily. It was too, it was too too hyped for what it actually could deliver, uh, yeah. but it was good, still enjoyable. Powers were really cool and good fun and, and gory and um, all that kind of stuff, but it was never going to be a Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed. It's not. It's too harsh and too unpleasant to really make those kind of numbers for a lot of people. Plasmids in Bioshock. Mm. Especially in the first Bioshock, because I think in... Well, I was going to say the second. Well, uh, sorry, not, not Infinite, because in Infinite, they felt like they're there because they had to the be another good fun. Uh, in Bioshock 1, what made the Plasmids so good is that they were integral to the plot and the world of Rapture was built around them. Mm. Everything was about the Plasmids and the whole c collapse of their society was predicated by All the, about those plasmids the need for Plasmids. <laughs> well, they're, they're awesome. The, the fact in 2 is that you could, have, you could dual wield them, you could have the Plasmid and a gun and that's yeah. that made the gameplay quicker, I think. Or yeah. the combat at least, anyway. Um, that's why I would I would prefer that I think over the first. But the first story, the first story is better. I think. The yeah, I mean they're, they're good in both one and two. I think two wasn't as replayable for me, but I can go back and play one, and in every you know a couple of years or whatever, I can chuck it in and be like, oh, this is a really cool gaming experience. And the plasmids are the main, not the main reason, but they're at least like forty percent of the of that. And the the world of Rapture is probably the sixty percent of that. No, let's say another forty percent. And then the really 20% is just the general narrative. Let's go with that, shall we? One of my favourite powers ever in a game, and the one that's made me laugh the most, I think, is the scream in in chivalry. Sure. Ah! I can't, I, I can't explain what? how much fun that is, just a, hammering the scream in... button as you're running towards someone. There's a button in chivalry <laughs> which is just battle sword. cry. Right, and it's just different cries depending on what you're doing. So if you're the vanguard and you're running straight at someone with your sword out, he just goes ah! But it's absolutely it's brilliant. Oh, it's I don't know. It's just it, you, all you hear is the whole map is just full of people screaming <laughs> at each other, and, and then you hear to, a chink, uh, chink, chink. <laughs> to what awesome. end though? To what? Nothing. What, is it, is it's it's not a ship people. Is it defense or something. It's yeah. a ship people. You, 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 uh, okay. Gav always used to play as um, one of the characters. He used to run with his fist out, just his fist like this, going ah. <laughs> and he just puts you in the head and your head bursts but it's like it actually worked as a valid tactic like you're screaming at people scared them you'd come running at them with your sword out and you'd see them shit themselves and like <sighs> I, I love it cool. I, I love that that game that game again it's repeating itself but it's so much fun because it's it different is. and I've always enjoyed melee characters though in general I always try, I mean I've, when I've played MMOs I've always been a warrior I've always been someone who gets up and dirty and stabby you know like that like it's been all a stab. Have you got any game? You haven't mentioned many, Lou. That um, that have I got... have mentioned a few powers. Come on then, more. More. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to think actually. You must give more powers. <laughs> Sorry. Well, one thing. One thing that comes a lot. A lot of people like this. I know you guys aren't as keen on. Or I've heard certain criticisms. Anyway, um, the the suit powers that you get in Crisis. Not even oh, I like Crisis. Them. I, I I really like them. I think Crisis Two was my favourite out of them all for the for the suit powers. But the, you know the fact that you could, especially when you played like multiplayer games or something like that, you could run around and you could change uh, your suit's properties. So you could be you could change it so you've got better armour uh, in mm. an instant, and then you could switch it into um, uh, invisibility mode, or cloak mode, or whatever, and then you could switch it to. to oh, I've forgotten the other ones, but there's a few uh of them. Well, there was the main two with cloak and invisibility, but a lot of them were more sort of passive things. I know cloak and, and uh, armor is a bit more passive, but I think some of them was like there was uh, the vision mode wasn't there. You could do the alien vision was was part of the suit's power, where yeah. you could uh, pick out where they were on the map and and where their weak points were and things like that. I think it's been a while since I played it. I only played through it once. I, I like the powers. I think what I what I was expecting from what they advertised it as the as the suit powers has been. 
it couldn't quite deliver because they made you out to be super overpowered and you actually weren't like the armor only lasted for about five seconds mm. and the cloak was good but what annoyed me about the cloak was that every time you turned it on it went cloak engaged <laughs> and it was like right i don't need you to tell me that seven thousand times like just have the hood went transparent and i'm like I, i'm clever enough to understand that I pressed the button and turned on the cloak. You don't have to tell me that it's been cloak engaged every time I do it. And you couldn't turn that off, I don't think. No, you that's couldn't. kind of annoyed me. That was a nitpick, but it when when you like when you played the game for about eight hours and it's still doing it. It's like, come on. How how much have you guys played Fable, the Fable games? Played um oh, is it, I don't know if it's two or three. Is which is the one where at one point you get put in prison for years? Or you go to an well, island. I think that's two, I think. Right. I think. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, spoilers there. I'm not a massive. I, I mean, no. I've played them all all the way through, but I'm, I'm not a massive, massive fan of them. Um, I don't, I've played them all once through. Um, the reason I raise I raise that is because the magic in Fable is probably my favourite magic in any game that I've played that I can think of. I enjoyed the leveling system. I enjoyed the fact that your your magic got is very repetitive, but every single magic implementation in every single game is very repetitive. But this one, I it felt. Nicely, you could direct, you could like build up your fire belt bolt or whatever, or your fire uh, spell. You'd f cast your fire spell, and you could you could like throw it at a distance, or you could have a area effect one from the same upgrade. And I I liked that. I liked this the system that it had. I liked the fact that you could kill loads of enemies around you at once, and you know area effect type thing. I do remember the magic being very satisfying in that game. Yeah, and well, I, I like the combat as well. To be fair, but yeah, the, the ma we're talking about abilities, aren't we? So yeah. It's all right. It's not like you can only talk about that. Just, it's an interesting thing to talk about because a lot of games sort of give you a super powered fantasy, even if you have to level it up and grind it. It's quite a core appeal of, of what a lot of games deliver. Even Mario, even Mario, if you want to talk about it, it's got loads of power ups. It's getting bigger, yeah. the, all the different suits, and well, those suits are kind of different, I suppose, but he has the, the fire powers and all that kind of stuff. Isn't it a thing of Mario as well, where he can breathe underwater in all the games like no problem? Like uh, in two D yeah. ones, he never needs to get air. Um, in, does he? Yeah, in the three D ones, he can't. He has to get air in Galaxy and okay. uh, Mario sixty four because he's got a he's got a circular gauge. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, but in, isn't it in Mario sixty four where you can collect a coin that refills your air? Yeah, <laughs> breathing there's, gold. The certain the certain game mechanics like that that I. I don't get the thought process and the logic behind it. Like that one's like, I don't really get that. It's At least just, the Sonic Air Bubble it, kind of made it's sense. It's a game. It doesn't matter. It, it, these, they do matter a little bit. Like they just, they don't. You get over it, but they irk me a little bit. Like in Castlevania, hearts uh, are you ammo. It's like, why aren't hearts your health? And if it's your ammo, why is it a heart? Like the items in your Castlevania, you have to get hearts to replenish them. Like you've got axes, which is a special item. And you can only use them if you've got a certain number of hearts, and it's like, why? Why are they hearts? Why aren't it's they just? Something to do with the fact that he's a vampire or whatever it is. No, you're not a vampire. You're just a normal bloke. You're yeah. a vampire slayer, aren't you? Yeah, it just so just the things like that. Where it's just a weird design choice that's stuck, and it's like, why did you go with that one? Then to get your health, you had to eat food like a piece of roast beef that you find in the wall or whatever. That's how <laughs> Castlevania works. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you had to like smash walls chicken. And... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm oh, going from Symphony again. of the Night here, which is the one I've played, but I know in the NES versions it's the same system. There's this, yeah, weird, anyway. <laughs> Nothing to do with powers, but it's just the weird, the way that they implement powers and, and health and stuff in games is sometimes very strange. So we, had a, we had a guest on and someone called it like Trash Can Chicken or something. It was yeah. one chicken. Streets, what, it Streets was... of Rage has Trash Can Chicken. Trash Can... <laughs> yeah, there, isn't there a funny... Is it a college humor oh, thing? It was, or somebody um, did a, an animation, or is it Eagle Raptor or somebody, where he's like, what we're we doing in games in real life, and he like, punches a trash can, he's like, sweet health, eats it, and he goes like, Bleh! It was, uh, it was, dri it was Drew from a nook. He's the one right. who called it Wall Chicken, or whatever it was. Wall Chicken. I think, I think it was Trash Can, big, trash can Ham or something like that. It was something funny. It was really... What about the original Robot. Thief game? That had lots of abilities and, uh, and cool things in it. Well, that's kind of... It had gadgets. It didn't really have abilities. It, yeah. it was all gadgets with, like, the um, the, the vine uh, the, the vine arrow and the water arrow and stuff. Yeah, I suppose they had gadgets, I don't know. I take that back, sorry. Apologise. We had discussed gadgets before. We might yeah. have discussed those before, but I don't think... I don't think we have. Well, I'm out. That's I'm good. out that's, as well. Yeah. That's enough, I think. So let us move on to news, then. A um, couple of things have happened this week. 
They have. First of all, let's talk about Oculus because there's quite a lot of uh, Oculus stuff. Obviously, a couple of weeks ago, we got a release date of early first quarter 2016. Yeah, something like that. Um, couple, uh, I think it was Thursday or Friday last week they announced the the specs that you need to run an Oculus Rift on your computer. Quite high, I think. They have to be though. Um, oh, well, yeah, I'm saying it's still quite high though for a consumer product. It's, it's quite high, but the thing is, that we're, we're talking about a product which isn't released until next year, and we're only in spring of this year. Yeah. Okay. So the Nvidia GTX 970, which. That's I've got. Pre pretty high end, pretty high end. Uh, this is minimum specs, though. Oh, no, this is recommended, sorry. Recommended. Uh, an Intel i5-4590, um, which isn't that high spec, but it's high enough. We're all okay with that. We're all on i7s, I'm assuming. 8 gig RAM, pretty standard entry level these days, though. Think yeah, about it. yeah, yeah. Uh, compatible HDMI 1.3. If you haven't got a HDMI 1.3 video output on a GTX 970, then... Then I feel bad for you, son. Yeah. <laughs> I've got 99 problems, but my graphics card ain't one. <laughs> two, two whole USB 3 ports? How dare they? What the hell? What is this, 2046? Uh, mine only needs one. What are you using the other one for? Um, for the For the left eye. All oh, right, well, Lisa left eye Lopez. Oh, and this is this is the worst part. Windows Seven Service Pack One or newer. I've got that. I'm good with that. Horrific. No Windows so, XP but, in this bitch. So wouldn't that be a case of anybody who's probably interested in being an early adopter of, of that is probably going to have a decent spec gaming PC to begin with? They're probably yeah. hoping it doesn't seem like if you guys are saying that's not more than what you've got, that's and you, you 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 know people with they were like you were into your PC enough to have them at the level that you've got them at are the kind of people that are actually going to buy the Oculus Rift in the first yeah, place yeah I, I that's average gaming rig spec now yeah. so by next year that will be pretty old school to be honest yeah so I don't see a problem with that so um, also this week um, the specs for all well some uh, I think GameSpot did an article for the specs for all of the different VR units uh, the, of the actual hardware specs have, uh, have now come out We've got Oculus Rift specs, uh, which is better than I thought, I have to be honest. I thought there were going to be 1080p screens, but we've got no, a 2160 no. by 1200 screen, but a single 2160 by 1200 screen. Which will be two, basically two, uh, 2,000 pixel wide screens. Yeah, so it's not amazing, but it's better than Morpheus, which is a, it's a not 1920 by 1080 screen. The problem is that I've been, I followed John Carmack on, um, on Twitter, and he was complaining about the fact that even 4K is not going to be brilliant when it comes to seeing people's faces and reading text inside the, the Rift. He says that, that mobile handsets aren't going to get much better than, than just below 4K. And he, he really thinks that there needs to be a push. Basically, there's no need for people to make mobile phones any higher res than that. Mm. Yet they need mobile phone screens for the inside of the Rift. So they're either going to have to source their own screens if they want to go high enough res so that it's actually believable or well that's the only option they've got really which is a shame so it's like he's he's the voice of of kind of reason and normalcy in in vr and what he's saying is basically these specs that we're looking at here even the vive specs possibly not going to be brilliant these are going to be first mm. gen things oh yeah well, of course they are because they are first gen but if they don't take off, then they'll only ever be first gen. If these things don't take off, then there's not going to be a high res VR product. Yep. Mm -hmm. So th that was that was one thing. The Vive has got a twelve eighty <coughs> by. Uh, hang on. So is it twelve hundred by eight eighteen hundred per eye? Yeah. So it's going to be portrait in each eye, I guess, isn't it? Mm. Uh, well, I'm not worried about the portrait or the landscape. Uh, the orientation. I'm, I'm more. That's the highest the res. That, yeah, that's that's the, easily the highest res out of them all. Screen size is to screen size is to be confirmed though. So screen size doesn't matter that much as long as the the optics use it well. Yeah. In the end, it's the screen size which is this close to your face. So oh, I could see that much. I could see the fact that it not being as say someone's got a good gaming uh, PC, they are going to be used to high res gaming all the time. So is is the idea of the immersion of the Oculus Rift 
enough to off balance not having that high res that they can get if they just sat and did it on their monitor. I think that might be a bit of a stumbling block for some people. I couldn't Possibly. deal with the low res that I experienced on Lou's uh, DK2. Uh, it's, yeah. it's horrific. It would give me headaches. It, I can't read things on the screen. It's, it's horrible. I couldn't uh, read things when I played if, if we get a first gen and I can read something, I don't know what resolution we need for that to happen. I've, I'm not an expert in this in this area. I I think I would. I think I'd be happy. I think I might Car I might go for them. Carmack reckons 4K is the minimum you're gonna need to get this to work, so that you can read text comfortably, like you can read text on your monitor now. Mm. Now the immersion isn't broken. It's not a pop of immersion or presence because we were getting that from a really quite a low res product. I it felt like you were there. It was just. Like you were looking through a fencing mask or something. So yeah. the the problem is not immersion; it's just in getting the resolution up so that you can be practical with it. So you can have a desktop, or you can recognise people's faces from afar. Because when I play Half Life Two and the Rift, it feels amazing. And when I'm looking at things close up, they look real. But when they get a little bit further away, they become all fuzzy and mm. and. To get the screen door effect and it ruins it because you, you just don't get the the resolving power that if i look out my window i can see trees over there you want that you you want that extra step when especially you're especially considering how good games are looking these days as well that's my point yeah it's, you could have this you could have you know i remember coming around to yours chris and this isn't even new but when i came and watched you playing uh, battlefield 3 mm. on your pc i was like my god like this is starting to look like real life and if you've got to go from being used to that kind of quality to, to then go into something that's not, but then you've got the offset against the immersion of being well, quote, this, quote, this inside is, the experience. This so. is one of my arguments is that at the moment, I mean, the Oculus is aimed at PC gamers. I don't think they're, they're aiming for another market yet. Oh, they haven't announced it at least. I think there's murmurings that they may go for consoles, etc. But that if they're aiming at the PC market, we're a finicky bunch. We're not gonna we're not gonna accept anything less than perfection, especially those high end gamers that are gonna be buying this high end rig you know stuff. We want the best of the best. That's how it is. I'm sorry, but you know, I don't care how much of a twat that makes me sound like. It's it's how we we like being able to fiddle with everything and make sure everything's right and looks perfect and works perfectly. And we're not happy if it isn't. Look at again what happened with Greg the other day on GTA Online. He was having crashes, <coughs> he was having problems with it, and he was like, Fuck this, fuck this shit freaking rubbish you know we're all the same really when it comes down to it i think just to rephrase what you said slightly i think pc gamers don't strive for perfection but they strive for 80 percent of perfection and like to get the 20 percent themselves out of it hmm. yes no yeah you're right exactly exactly <laughs> So yes, uh, basically we have specs. I've just pasted a chat, uh, a thing into chat to, to that goes through the comparison. I'm sure there's more learned people on that uh, article that explain uh, more things about it. On, uh, than, than the, we the, can. the good, the good thing about all three of the specs is that they're all doing above 90 hertz. Now my my DK2 is 75 hertz and it's very smooth, but 90 to 120 hertz will be really nice. Mm. It'll mm. be silky smooth. It'll be like having your head inside some boobs. <laughs> All right, that have a very good refresh rate in boobs on The Witcher Three. Because I would, honestly, I, that that woman's back end and the first scene of that game what? is yeah. amazing. So Witcher Three <laughs> starts with a scene where there's a naked, it almost does. a naked. Well, you can nearly see everything. A bum. It's just oh, it so looks lovely. It, Chris, it you're not normally the oh, lusty lovely. type. Oh, shit, it's. It, but it's when it's approaching that levels of almost realism that you kind of go, it is a computer game, but it does look like a nice bump. <laughs> they are the pixels, same. but those pixels are arranged very nicely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a pervy <laughs> type with it, but I'm, I like, I like a good bum. I like a good bum, my wife like will tell you. Butts. No, not necessarily <laughs> big butts, just good bums, nice bums. And, and she had a very nice bum and, and that's all you could see basically was her bum laid down. Oh. Anyway, right. The feminists are rising, Chris. Yes, they are. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm appreciating the female figure. You're not, Surely you're the not female allowed form. to find us attractive ever. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, That's objectification. Chris, Chris, Chris's favourite ability is coming up very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. Yeah, you lost me there. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what you. I, I was thinking about the next article. Doom yeah. first public gameplay footage announced for the June 14th 
10 second trailer this is all over the sites and 10 some... second trailer but two seconds of actual content let's be fair there's about eight <laughs> seconds of logo i know i watched it and i was like right that looks not that doesn't so look that good actually. i've deconstructed it i've actually watched it frame by frame pretty much because i am really interested in this <laughs> Fuck you both! <laughs> right, I like Doom. I wanted to hear what you got to say, but it's funny that you did that. But um, yeah, the, 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 it starts off with someone loading a double barrel shotgun. Crowd pleaser, everyone wants a double barrel shotgun back from Doom, Doom 2. And then it's got a Revenant basically firing his home and missiles and screaming at you. That's and it. The sparks, the sparks coming out of his torso. That's it. And there's some blurry background, so you can't see shit. It looks like it's in hell. Things look like they're on fire or <laughs> are bleeding in the background. I've heard, I've, I've read up the, um, the, the write-ups of the, the, the gameplay announcement that was done last year, I think it was, when people were talking about it. There's lots of kind of, the, there's lots of finishing moves. Like, you go up to, like, you know, have you seen the, the footage of Brutal Doom, where you kill imps and stuff and then lift them over your head and tear them in half and stuff? There's yeah, lots of that, like, You'll go up to people and punch a hole in the face, and then not people, but zombies and uh, demons. <gasps> Corpse has just said, "Leave Doom in the 1990s." No, <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we even got a fist bump. Then. I... <laughs> no, I like Doom. My girlfriend I... takes a piss out of people who like Doom. Like that's the ultimate nerdy thing. Doom, Doom, and I had to admit that I've been watching a Doom speed run the same day that she said that. Doom three <laughs> can fuck off, as far as I'm concerned. It was a piece of shit. Um, I'm I'm all up for trying a new Doom though. I'm, I'm I mean I'm, I'm, I play, I like you know what I like the single player in Doom. I like the single player, but I'm not keen on the multiplayer personally. I'm looking forward to this. I, I don't know what id software are going to do, considering their, their diminished team. They're not even id software anymore, are they, really? And Rage was a big flop. Uh, I, tried to play. I liked it. I liked Rage a lot. I, I played that yeah, all the way through. the only person in the entire universe who did, because you know, I, I, you know, I played it twice and didn't get more than about an hour into it. It took me eight months to get it working properly on my computer, but after <laughs> eight months, I enjoyed playing the game thoroughly. <laughs> And it, it looks nice like a cool as well. game to me that I just never played it, but it looks like it would be good fun that game. It was a futuristic RPG. I quite liked it. Yeah, I think it was the the, the problem was that it came out at the same time as Borderlands. I was just going to say Borderlands that. Borderlands yeah. stamped all over its face. Even though it was an inferior product in terms of the budget and the technology, it was just a way better game. And it did the same thing. It scratched the same itch of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. And I'm, I. I I think they both have merits. I, I enjoyed Doom. Uh, sorry, I enjoyed Rage, but as I said, it took me a long time to get working. I tweaked it so much because I was like, I'm enjoying this. I like the characters, I like the guns, I like the gameplay, I like the. But. Mm. Sorry. So, speaking about Borderlands, um, Borderlands 3. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been announced, it's on the way. Um, Franchise is nearing 25 million copies sold. I think that's a pretty good achievement. It's a very wow. good achievement. And not only that, but they, they've they've got the DLC right as well for their products. I mean, I know the, the pre-sequel was a bit of a flop. It was overly hyped for a, comp like a, a team who didn't have the same edge as the original I still game. haven't played it all the way through. I played as much as I played with you guys that weekend. That's it. Yeah. But um, I'm looking forward to Borderlands. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually a little surprised that they've announced this because they were saying they weren't going to do another Borderlands franchise, another Borderlands game, uh, but that they wanted to basically make something else. They're working on Battleborn at the moment, which I've not heard anything about recently. They announced it in January so, 2015. Apparently, I haven't heard much about it. Yeah, I, I, just, I don't know what's going on with Gearbox. At the uh, actually, Gearbox hasn't I can't said. Wait for this. Gearbox hasn't said whether the new Borderlands game is Borderlands 3, but given that the the fact that Pitchford has called it the big one, it seems likely. So it's speculation at the moment, and this is clickbait, and I unfortunately clicked clickbait and pasted it in chat, so sorry. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. But, oh, well. you know, we, we like Borderlands, so hopefully there'll be another good one. <clears throat> and I've only not played pre-sequel because you guys played it without me after the LAN and I... We, just I haven't. We been didn't bothered. play much of it. I played a bit with Greg, and we just couldn't get into it. The oh, really? story's All right. okay. not that good. I didn't like the mechanic. I didn't like the the main the oxygen, oxygen stuff. It was like it it was half pointless. It, it didn't really add much to the game. I remember watching you guys with the oxygen with the oxygen thing, and I thinking that the the constant uh, screening up and screening down of the oxygen thing seemed like it would become quite annoying quite quickly. It's just a constant 
visual interface interruption as far as I can see. I was okay with that. It was more the fact that it was it was a tiresome mechanic. It would have been good for a few levels rather than the entire game. Hmm. Like it, it didn't stretch out into a full game's worth of that same mechanic. Yeah. It wasn't interesting enough to basically to do that. There's a new game called Parallax that's been announced. Which well, I've... it's not been. It's not really been announced. Um, I put this one in. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. Right. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this one, but uh, it was basically a game that it hasn't had much attention, but it looks really, really good. It looks um, great right up my street. Yeah, it's basically a cross between Portal um, and Anti Chamber, and a bit of um, like trick jumping games. I'm trying to think if there's any. I don't suppose Portal's got the sort of jumping around on bounce pads and stuff in it. But it's got a really, really nice aesthetic, and mm-hmm. it's it's catching people's eyes. And I'm I'm thinking I'm going to get this because you can buy it now. It's it's already out. Is it just is it right. PC exclusive that one? I think it is PC exclusive. Yeah, you can get it on Steam now. It's um it's it's it, not early access. It's actually a full game. It came it out. It could be mouth. one of those that if it's successful, it gets a console release. If it does, I will definitely get it. It looks right up my street as well. That kind of puzzle. Game with I, I like the fact that they've got with this really simple color palette, they can manage to make everything look really very smooth. I'm mm. guessing it's probably quite a low budget game relatively, but because they've not had to go for really complex textures and stuff, everything looks really nice and smooth. And, and I just like the look of it. They've done a, a lot with a little, haven't they? Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, it's a well defined uh, aesthetic, and they say it does what the game is doing, which is you basically go from a dark world to a light world through portals. Mm. Uh, it's one to watch this, I think, and I think it's probably one to buy. I'm yeah. probably going to get that. One uh, one thing I forgot to uh, mention when we were talking about Oculus, there was uh, there was a apparently it was in question whether or not Oculus would allow adult content to be put on on the Oculus. Now, I know it's not a big topic necessarily, but it I I didn't even know that this was a thing. I didn't realise that they may not have done it. The, 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 what this relates to is the Oculus Marketplace. So Oculus at the moment basically distribute loads of the stuff that the community make. They've got a, a place where you, one place where you can go and get loads of Oculus content. Right. But they didn't... Well, there was some some debate about whether they should get, be able to get porn in there in the same way that you can't buy porn on Netflix or whatever. Right. Is that, um, is that definitely what it's related to? Because I, I thought it was that they, they were going to hardware block it. Well, they can't hardware block it, can they? I mean, what can they do? It's a, it's a monitor, basically. Block flesh colours. Well, that's what YouTube do to an extent, but it's not going to work for your own device. You can use it for whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think I mean, it relates it's, specifically to the marketplace. All right, well, okay, that's a different subject entirely, and whatever, I don't care. They can do what they want. I just thought that it was going to be like a <laughs> HD... I mean, I, I, to be, I've got to be honest with you, if I get an Oculus, I'm not going to be watching porn on it. It's not. It's not It's not really what I'd want to get it for, you know? But, I've not looked I've not looked at it yet. I've had the Oculus for ages, and... It's, yeah, it doesn't, it's something it's not, I might... It's something I do want to look at at some point, just to see what the hell's going on with it. But I imagine at this stage, it <laughs> will be really crap. Then. I imagine <laughs> at this research. stage, it'll be, it'll be full of viruses, and it'll be full of malware and all the rest of it and you have to install <laughs> dialers to watch it so it'll be like the early days of porn on the internet yeah probably so yeah. i want to wait until it's matured a bit so to speak <laughs> <laughs> okay. civilization beyond earth expansion lets you colonize the ocean i was hoping that uh, steve would be in this so to talk about this because he's got beyond earth hasn't he he has, but he's not yeah, that enamored by it. No, um, it's not being. It didn't get great reviews either. It was like six out of tens and and the like. What I've, what he what he said? It's basically not as deep as the main game, so it's not as appealing to him on that basis. It basically sums up what he said, I think. And so this this expansion basically allows you to uh, imagine we're playing Civ Five, and we could actually create like a an oil platform in the middle of the ocean and build on it. You know, you can build a city in the middle of the ocean or whatever, and build build somewhere. Rapture. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. I, I'm not sure which way I care or not, I'll be honest. Mm. All right. I'm not going to get Beyond Earth, so... But anyway, moving on. Uh, Unite. Uh, Unite Europe is on the 25th to 25th of June in Amsterdam. Unite is the Unity thing. I'm a bit of a Unity fanboy, so I wanted to mention it. Um, Are you going to go? Uh, you know, I'm really, really tempted. It's only in Amsterdam. Hey, well. guys! 
Yeah. I hey call you You can make games. <laughs> <laughs> make games and smoke a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm I'm quite keen on the idea, but I wouldn't want to go on my own. When is it? June. All oh, right, that's it's too quite, early. Yeah, I'm going to say it's quite it's quite soon. I've only just found out about it. Um, I've been a bit. I would have went with you. I'd have been a bit. I'm hold a bit, your hands. A bit out of the uh, game dev loop at the moment myself because I'm so busy with work, and when I'm not doing that, I'm playing games. So uh, yeah. Maybe next year we'll go to that, yeah? Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind doing that, even if it's just good to go and, you know, go to Amsterdam and have a smoke and a pancake. <laughs> i just have a pancake. I can't, I can't have either. No. Right. I'll just so, have an Amsterdam. Moving on. Yep. Um, God of War 3 remastered. Now, I... isn't it already in HD? <laughs> isn't God, yeah, of, isn't God of War already released on the PlayStation 3 in HD? Yeah, it's it's remastered. Basically, means it it looks a bit better, so you can buy it again on PlayStation Four. <laughs> or have they done it in? It's is the it same. In, is it? It's the same as the Last of Us. Oh, I Sorry. don't know. Actually, it could have been. It's the same as the. It'll be the same as the Last of Us remastered, door, where it's like it, it. The game already looked good. They just made it look a bit better now. I mean, the difference between the Last of Us and the Last of Us remastered was not hugely noticeable to me. It looked a bit nicer, a bit richer, but it wasn't like the original game looked crap or anything like an old. PS2 title that's been remastered. It's not like that. So, it, for my mind, it seems to be almost like they're doing this with their big games because the console isn't backwards compatible. They go, well, we'll remaster the big titles so that if you if you want to play it on this console, you can either buy it again or if you've not played it before, buy the remastered version if you want to get into that the, series. They used to Which just I can kind of understand. They used to just call it a port. It's like selfies, you know. They used to just call them photographs of myself. <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, uh, why? Why? It's not... Yeah, I think you've hit, you know you've hit a good point there. It's essentially a port. It is a port, but if you call it remastered, it gives it that slightly bullshit esque veneer of, of uh, doesn't it? Noise. It's like it's been, it's Dis been remastered. Disney have been doing this for a century. Hmm. Yeah. And we all waited for the Lion King, didn't we? Tell me we all waited, just like me, for the Lion King remastered on DVD. No. No, okay. I've never owned it on DVD actually because I because I've watched it so many Fuck times Disney on VHS. Fucking Disney DVDs and the bloody stupid d delayed, staggered release date so that you have to buy them during the limited period when they're on sale. Fuck I, that. I was just going to say exactly yeah, the same. Is... You can't get the Lion King DVD now. It's I got it while it was out. That on is HD really stupid. Remastered. That is. Well, oh, no, it's not. It's also anyway. marketing. It's like they so they they get massive. They can they can basically say right we're going to start releasing Beauty and the Beast on HD remaster and we're going to get 10 billion dollars from this particular release so they can market themselves and anyway stop talking shit well I don't know anyway sorry, sorry. Mass Effect uh, director uh, project director rather Casey Hudson has joined the Microsoft HoloLens project which is interesting to me because I mean but you know Bioware in general, I'm a big fan of their of their work. He's a project director, and he's joining something that I I think, and I think Steve agreed with us. Uh, we were we were kind of arguing with each other about it, but not really arguing about <laughs> anything um, the other week about um, Hololens being like the next big thing. I think that augmented reality, personally, is more. Even though virtual reality is closer, I think augmented reality's got more. Um, it's more interesting and it's got more potential uses uh, in not necessarily in games but in general uh, across across the world and uh, it's interesting that uh, a game guy's getting involved with it I think I'm not sold on HoloLens I'm not sold on, on this generation of augmented reality to be honest I, I feel like the Microsoft throwing a lot of money at this in the same way they did with Bing just to get a big product out there to help sell all the other products that are their bread and butter like windows have you ever used bing no no neither have i i in fact i i, I don't think i've ever <clears throat> typed a search in windows and it's went to bing because i always configure it to use google but the, the bing data center is bigger than google's apparently but it'll be They're getting just... used by people who buy windows machines and don't customize them remember we are the one percent I know. I just, I, I don't know. I get the feeling with this because of the Minecraft stuff and now this. It's like lots of high profile 
high press value things going into something which itself isn't that interesting. That's my feeling. I'm not as excited as this about this as I am about VR. Oh, I'm not particularly excited about either of them, but I think I think Hololens <coughs> has got more potential when they get it right, and I think it'll be. When's does anyone know when Hololens, Hololens is going to come out? I don't think there's any release dates. I think no. that at the moment they're just flirting with the idea of it. Hmm. It's very limited um, press coverage of it. There's only a few press that have been allowed to use it. And lots of the reports are that you've basically got a tiny little window where the augmented reality happens. And if you look outside that window, it's all normal. Hmm. So yeah, that'll just get better, though, won't it? With the... I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. We'll see. You don't need particularly big windows, though, do you? If you have a pair of glasses on. Yeah, but the point is that the, it's like it's a it's like someone holding a, a like you know if you hold you've held your phone about here. You've just got a tiny little window where all the action happens. It's not like VR where you've got black and then everything is happening here. It's like everything's happening in this postage stamp floating in front of you. Yeah, he's, he's saying it doesn't take up your full field of vision in the way that VR does. Yeah, There's I a thought, noticeable I it would, though. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. You've you've got smoke uh, smoke glasses on basically, and it projects into the middle of the glasses a little rectangle, which is where the augmented reality stuff happens. So if you're looking directly at something, then that's fine. But if you look, if you move your eyes around like you do naturally then you, you look past the edge of the little rectangle, which is where the augmented reality is projected, and it breaks the illusion. So you've got to be up close and looking directly at things. Mm -hmm. I think they'll make it better than that. I hope they'll make it better than that. Maybe. But I still think augmented reality, as a concept, is, be is better. I think it's more immersive than VR. It's less immersive by its very nature. No, but I think I think it's more immersive because the the real world it, it augments the real world. It's part of reality, or it's it's a it's a yeah. Layer but that's not what immersion is. Of... Immersion immersion is being transported from reality. You're immersed in something when you're not in the real All world. Right, then I think it's more useful than whatever. <laughs> I, maybe I got the word word wrong there, but yeah. we'll right. see. Yeah, I think I'm we'll going to see. Win yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to. I was going to talk about the new Cities Skylands DLC, but I'm not going to because again, Steve isn't here to comment on it. Not much yep. point. Um, before we move on to well, in fact, like, your your statement about your your new geeky specky thing. Yeah, I've just um, I've mentioned previously that, uh, that I bought a couple of really really nice illustrated books um, for the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. And there's now a new one called ZX Spectrum, a visual compendium. Um, running a Kickstarter, it's already doubled its goal with 25 days to go. Um, and it just looks beautiful. Just take a look at it. Um, loads of Sinclair Spectrum screenshots and maps and write-ups and stuff. And it's beautifully done. The other two books, I can completely tell you, it's very, very well done. Sort of thing that if you... You leave it on your kind of coffee table, and people come around and think you're awesome. People with beards and cropped hair will think you're awesome. <laughs> people who wear like moccasins and, and flat caps will think you're awesome. And you know, okay. like diamante studs. You're not the kind of people I want perusing no, my coffee table. Me neither. <laughs> I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking, there's only, there's why the one, fuck am I buying this? There's only one reason that I'd want someone like that in my house for me to. Murder them and bury them under the. You've got a beard and close cropped hair and moccasins, Chris. <laughs> a close, what a close, close crop. Well, you mean, oh you, my god! You, you've got short, hair, short you hair and a beard. I, I'm I'm not a trendy twat though. No, you're not. Yeah, so shut up. You're not a spice boy, as we're calling them in in work at the moment. So, <laughs> thank you very much for everybody who has watched today. <laughs> um, thanks to Lou. Thanks to Sam. Not thanks to Lou, actually. Bugger off, Lou. We hate you. Hope, you. hope you don't ever come on the show ever again. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I think we're done. Um, if you're interested in anything we do, you can follow us on our website, www.resonancearcade.com. We're also on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and uh, Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and all the others forward slash Resonance Arcade. Search for us on Bing. <laughs> yeah. on Bing. Like, I'm going to Bing us right now. 
Bingers, I bet you, I bet you it comes up with some Half Life bollocks. Yeah. It comes, it'll come up with porn, I bet. Isn't that what people use Bing for? Didn't Steve say it was good for porn? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, right. The f- all of all but one of the first page links is us, Chris. Ooh, well, that's Our just... Bing Bing optimization is yeah, spot but on. Who's going to search for Resonance Arcade? Put in gaming talk show. I bet we're nowhere near the top. Of course not. Come on. <laughs> on Google though, we're the first result. So gaming really? talk no, shows. Twitch. Not at all. That's because it's is that because it's in your frequently searched Google things, like <laughs> yeah. on your computer. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I do. I spend all day not doing any work. I just search Resonance Arcade, Resonance Arcade, Resonance Arcade. Resonance Where are we up to? How popular are we? Yeah. Don't even don't even copy and paste it. I just type it in every time. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yes, thank you very much for every, everybody coming. Uh, we're going to be starting doing our Metal Gear Solid Four stream at some point when Sam is ready for the, for it, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. See you later, Bye. guys. Bye. Ah.